Happy Monday, everybody. Happy January. Yo. Happy January? Yeah. Uh, oh. Hooray. Happy January. He gets it right all the time, man. Are you aware oh. of the power of shadows? <laughs> yeah. Lock it in, Daniel. Lock it in. Lock it in. Yeah. It's always You're a great, great stream. It's always a great stream oh. when, when Bryce can be in tears within the first five seconds <laughs> no. of him talking. Is it true? Is is true? Is this your actually Groundhog Day? Are we just going to loop? Is it? <laughs> yeah. We are. Yeah. We're yeah, stuck in 2020. Be. Happy yeah. 2020, everyone. <laughs> I, hope, I, hope, I, hope, I hope this, uh, I hope this, uh, uh, you know, the inauguration confirmation vote goes well. <laughs> yeah. Hint to future uh, self, buy GameStop, but like, sell it January 31st, midnight. Yeah. Hello, there's everyone. no there's no way Leffler and Purdue lose. <laughs> it's January again. <sighs> Happy New Year's Day. <laughs> Happy February 1st, everybody. God. Dang it. Mm, 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 mm. I legit didn't think that there was that tricky R in February until college when i misspelled it on in, oh you used in to say article fe fe or february i guess i just never had the need to spell the month before like or just mm. feb dot had been the way that i had i had written it and then i wrote it in in the newspaper and i got mercilessly mocked <laughs> well and plus also it's one of those things like once you know about that seeky secret sneaky r uh, you, uh, you, you overpronounce it like February. Once February. February. Like, like, welcome to February. February. You just sound like a dog with peanut butter. In February. <laughs> Library. Library. So I missed, uh, <laughs> I missed giving a gift to Bonnie on the day of her birthday because right up until the day of, I was convinced that I might surprise her with a Dalmatian puppy. And then I another realized one. what a horrible thing that is to do to another human. Uh, <laughs> Here's so, another obligation. <laughs> right. But also, like, I think she would have loved it, <laughs> but I'll never know because we live in the timeline where I didn't do anything. And so instead, this morning, I bought her an Oculus Quest 2, <laughs> which I know for a fact Callie is just going to steal, and it kills me. <laughs> um, man, another puppy. You're going to get another puppy? You just got a puppy. Another, like, lanky, kind of dumb dog? Well, and, well, and what's funny, or hyperactive, for sure, right? Uh, but but what's funny is at least Weimar honors don't shed. Uh, <laughs> Dalmatians, nothing but, mm -hmm. but shedding all over the place. And you get the worst of it. You get the white fur and the black fur. You can't, there's yeah. no yeah. <laughs> There's no interior that it works with. No. <laughs> There was there was one time early in our marriage I speculated about like oh man what if we got a dollar for every duchess hair that was on uh, that, that we found and then one day I came home from the road and I swear there was like a pillow sized bag uh Ziploc that sealed off and it just said congrats we're rich <laughs> like I don't know the Weimar artist in shed that's yeah cool. that's interesting it's the one good thing <laughs> all right uh, hello, everybody. You guys uh, want to do some weird things? Yeah, but let's do it. Andrew, uh, good. Real quick, I said this privately to Justin okay. uh, and Bryce. I'm going to say it again in front of you because I want you to validate my feelings. Like that was a legit, magical, amazing experience when Josie, like, like she shuffled the cards, she pulled them out, she mm -hmm. laid them out, and then she made the joke. Ah, uh, oh, I don't know, the government. And then we called the government, and then the government just knew, oh, ooh, that was so good. Mm -hmm. It was really good. Yeah, everybody, keep an eye out on scamnation.com. Yeah, we were talking about before the stream. It was, uh, it was a good time. Justin uh, nailed it. Yeah, Justin's funny. Yeah, hey, turns out mm, Justin's funny. The government was. Uh, the government <laughs> was funny. No, guys, he's just like somebody that's funny looking. It's just the delivery. It's no skill. That's it's it. Just, this is it's Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. Andrew has 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 long been the my my, my own personal uh, Alex Jones conspiracy theorist. That <laughs> indeed, this is all. It's only because I say words funny. There's no, <laughs> it's not just, because you're it, skilled. Or there timing, is like a, your he's got he's got he's got February, a February. presentation <laughs> of like pauses and like like clearly this is just an exploitation of <laughs> i just i want to like my, i'm gonna do this as proof one day i'm gonna be like hey i'm gonna bring him in as like a guest speaker at a company and he's gonna go into this powerpoint presentation in three minutes in like oh 
this guy you hired to do this gag is great. <laughs> you know, like, 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 <laughs> and our profits are going down, which is sort of bad. And like, oh, this guy, <laughs> you take him seriously. No, this guy's amazing. Oh, man. Yeah. Imagine if it's your doctor. <laughs> a know, funny doctor. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like I feel like somebody somebody's done that, right? I feel like I've seen a bit about the funny doctor who actually doesn't know anything, but everybody really likes. There was the kids say, in the Patch hall, Adams, kind of. The, the kids in the hall, the super charismatic doctor who, like, oh, a patient that, would die, and people it. would apologize yeah. to him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave Foley. Yeah. Uh, oh, what's up? La- last thing, uh, Justin. How, uh, 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 is the the map that you sent out like is are the things that I did visible to everybody? <laughs> uh, no, and uh, uh, we're live, but but yeah, no. I mean, I, I sent a map to my friends in Austin to let us know where cool places are. It's not live. Oh, it'll be a private. It's and it's a private. Did thing. you want it to be live? No, no. I I was definitely playing for an imagined audience. And Bryce, Bryce, by the way, yeah. literally asked the exact same question, but he was worried that his home address would be live on the internet, <laughs> where you, I guess, have been purposely filling it with disinformation. Well, no. I, I mean, first of all, I, I, I made three different overlays. One of which the inside joke was I was doing all the places that we went to in Let's Go Places Austin with the Rav okay. Four, and mm-hmm. then right. and then. Another one was called Places to Find Brian, and I and I put six different locations of torchies. <laughs> and then, and I places did where... notice that there were a lot of torchies. I mean, that was, yeah. yes, mm-hmm. like I made sub lists. I was like, I was performing, uh, and then eh. to be to be find, fair, that actually is legitimate info. <laughs> find a find a love that looks at you at the way Brian's looking at Justin moving to Austin. <laughs> 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 so we, we, do, we, we, we have a five way. We need we need to we need to put a. a I'll tell you what I've I've actually done. A, uh, it's been pretty good ramping up the 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 T public merch for politics, and I think we should probably start doing it for Night Attack, which is our another thing. <laughs> but one of the photos should, or one of the things should just be Brian's face, like the moment freeze frame the moment <laughs> like just like there's like just this like intensity of like. Like, like, just like <laughs> anger, anger, because like the excitement was leveraged against possible betrayal. Like, are you, are you was, messing with me? A, are you messing yeah. with me? What is happening mm-hmm. right now? Just, just this like, is like I'm just gonna throw the, the one thing that I've wanted for like, for over set, a decade. Uh, set jaw, uh, <laughs> like bug eyes. Like. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw this out there, Justin. Bunk beds, bunk beds. <laughs> look, don't, don't, don't look. There's. We Hold on, now way. I'm thinking about like, what if we built seven acres Guys. above <laughs> our seven acres, just on yeah. stilts? <laughs> you could have your own seven acres up above. I'm just, uh, I, I, so actually- The sky <laughs> kingdom in the trees. There's, there, there's, there, there's a lot of stuff that I actually do need to talk to you about, uh, Brian, about like looking for stuff. But uh, one of the things that we were looking at is as we're, you know, the market is very competitive and, and we were thinking about bidding while we were still here and whether or not we could have people go out there. And Ashley's like, like, do you think that Brian would would go and check stuff out for us? And I was like, I was like, <laughs> if I if I texted him in you the couldn't middle pay Brian of, to do that. <laughs> if 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 I texted him in the middle of like a, a Penny's graduation ceremony, <laughs> yeah, I think right? he'd be like. I think I can make it. I think oh, I can. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's that, Brian? You're about to become a grandfather. Penny's having a baby. Uh, would you mind checking out this duplay? Yeah, I'm on yeah. my way. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, no, I think we we are very very happy to have a an, an enthusiastic place, mostly because. The more I read the Austin subreddit, the more I realize I'm the literal villain of this story. <laughs> I know. It's going to be great. Look, I'm the villain, too. I was born in California. I, 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 it's like you, you're kind of you, – you have more of a claim to be an authentic Austonian than I do. Because- oh, oh, oh tr- trust me. Uh, me being born in Fort Worth, Texas, I got to find out the actual hospital so I can make it more uh, authentic. Just cash. But, just mention but that's, it but a that's lot. Going into, that's going into the letter that we are drafting that we will submit with our offers because we've heard that that, that helps a lot is, is the personal letter. But naming the like, hey, you know, born in Texas and I think I'm going to die in Texas in this house that you're going to sell me. 
Like a uh, day after it. I move in. But that's yeah. <laughs> just just as as often as you can in my meth lab. Start practicing now the phrase as a native Texan, and then just like, like all of your thoughts. Just get used to saying that as a native Texan. Yeah, I I, I yeah exactly. You're born. I gotta find another hospital. I'll text my mom. Hey, we should talk about goblins and stars. And yeah. Stuff. Okay. I'm gonna count you in, Andrew. In three, two. Hello and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Adrian Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Mr. Justin Robert, deep in the heart of Texas Young. Mm. Not yet, but hello. Oh, no, no. Texas is in his heart. He's not in Texas's heart yet. 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 I will eventually clog its aorta. Yeah. Like, like he's, <laughs> he's the McDonald's French fries of Texas. <laughs> exactly. Good old Justin Robert Fri Young. And, and, and Bryce Castillo. I, I'm Bryce HDL Castillo. <laughs> is, that, uh, is that the good one or the bad one? Yeah, no, no, that's I, the good I one. Oh, I don't know, but one. now I want to do a joke about like uh, in El Paso, they call it LDL. <laughs> oh, okay. LDL. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So uh, we had some news earlier last year about scientists looking at venus and seeing phosphine and being like hey the only way we know this thing could be produced would be you know biological life and i think we're all like or something else i think everybody was yeah it, New it, it, it reminded me a little bit did you get the same kind of like tingles of when there was that um oh was it uh neutrinos uh detecting something that seemed to indicate that that like time travel was possible uh, where it's like everybody knew that we, we, or we all strongly suspected what we would find out, but it was a fun thrill in the moment. Yeah, I think, I mean, here, I would say there in that situation, I don't think there was anybody making the argument that it really, that's what was going on, but they're like, huh, this is what it looks like, but we know it's not here. But here were people who are saying like, oh no, we think it's phosphine. And now some other research is like, no, it's sulfur dioxide. You measured it wrong. So, uh, kind yeah, of. That was fun, uh, though. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't read the study, so I don't know the details here, but it, it seems like nah, wah, wah, not again, foiled again. Yeah. I mean, this stuff is so hard, right? Like, by, by its very nature, it has to be a little bit more speculative than you'd want it. Like, because. You know, we can't just run over and have a billion people all test the same thing, right? Well, and this was also yeah. a, a weird, rare case where, uh, correct me if I'm misremembering, but I think that they got the results and they kind of tried to keep it quiet. Like they, they didn't, they didn't say, unlike, for example, the NASA, like every 20 minutes, NASA is holding a press conference to say, we think... We found evidence that silicon-based life is real. We don't know. We're NASA. Bye. Uh, uh, like, like I thought this particular discovery, they tried to keep uh, uh, a little bit quiet. I, I mean, it was a... I thought it was a... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'd have to follow back the course of that. And I would say NASA was r rare about that. You know, they, they didn't do that that often. But periodically, they would have something that they got excited about, and it felt like they didn't put it to a wider group of people before they did that. Yeah, you know, like the arsenic-based life. That was the one that just looked like. Oh, why. that's what I'm thinking of the the, the arsenic way. Yeah. The the one that was based like on uh, what uh, a, a pool in Wyoming or something. Yeah, it just was one of those things. Like there could, and it's part of the problem too, is like, we, I think we're in a, I think we're in a, for certain areas of research, I think we're in a healthier attitude or healthier place where you can be a bit more, Hey, uh, maybe aliens and people at NASA are like, yeah, maybe, maybe, but you need to, you know, like you gotta have your receipts. And I think that when you say something like our stick based life form, like one that we never detected before and all of that to go that far. And then to have like it so quickly, so quickly for that thing to get like taken apart was like, man, they did not go to a large enough group of people with that, which. Probably, well, it's, it's know. tough because, um, uh, the, 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 the now in the 21st century post-internet era, 
uh, the liter or figurative uh, viral era of information spread, like there is no middle ground. There is no quiet oh. clubhouse where you can whisper. It's like the moment the moment somebody whispers, somebody else copy pastes, and it's on the front page. No, of you, your peer review is still pretty strong. I mean, you just you just you choose more antagonistic people in your peer review process. I think that was the problem. I think that like you choose, you know, you're going to choose six people to ask to referee your paper. Choose six people that are going to be more critical. I think yeah, that was I, 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 I suppose what I'm more dialed in on uh, or fixated on is the uh, the culture of, of, you know, clickbait headlines, you know, where it's like, even if you do that, it's like uh, seven scientists deadlocked over issue of whether or not this arsenic based life I, form even exists. But, I, I, but I, the, I think there, there's there, there, there's a larger conversation that we can have about how we cover stuff like this because i think that like in general the base level of scientific knowledge is piss poor and the way that we categorize and and uh you know reflect some of those conversations are are bad but in general what what you're i think talking about brian is the possibility that any kind of whisper can be blown up 400x from where it initially starts but i think that there are some communities that that do reasonably talk about some of this stuff well and also if you if your referees leak it then rather that happen then you get referees who aren't critical and then you go out and say hey look everybody we found this and that was what happened was it like people were like you don't we don't think you use critical referees if they had been leaked and then you know the referee's like, no, this isn't real. Then it's not no egg on the face of the researchers for saying, oh, we think we found arsenic because it's like, no, we did our job. We didn't come up and say we had it. We have a paper that was asking this, but we didn't publish it. We didn't do a press conference on it because we're trying to find out. You know, look at the Allen Institute with the alien signal. You know, the, the is it? In, I would call it alien signal, but like that thing we talked about before, detecting yeah. the approximatory. They've handled that right, and nobody's really pointing fingers at them, going, oh, oh you know look what? at you. Actually, that is the one that I remember. Uh, I, I, I'm having the feeling, oh God, I, I, and I'm I'm dialed in on on how I felt about it, not about the the facts, but but I remember thinking, wow, they really uh, tried to hold this back so that they wouldn't pull an arsenic based life moment. Uh, but thing. they were, but the th remember the arsenic thing was, hey, let's have a press conference. We're gonna call everybody in and say we've made this amazing discovery, and just within days, other people in the field are like, no, this is the problem with it. And people were like, why didn't you ask, who are your referees on this? Who are your consultants on this? Because this got so quickly taken apart where Allen Institute hasn't made any statement, not saying anything about like, oh, we found this. We found this. They're like, they're internally like, we found a thing. We need to do our process. And the process leaked, but they're not getting criticized because it's not like they ran into a press conference. So they're I like, no. I, I I think I think you've really uh, got me dialed in on. A really important problem because if there's a dial that you can set and on the one side is everyone announces every wild idea they've ever had and as a result nobody believes anything in a headline when it comes to the science section of the newspaper i'm using air quotes uh, you know of, of the internet and then on the other hand you have keep everything secret until it's already been double blind seven year you know uh, studied uh where do you think we are on that rheostat between the two and where should we be? Like, are, are we doing pretty good in general as, as humans or, or should we be it, pivoting? It varies organization by organization. You know, some are good at it. Some are not. There's a lot of research organizations. They are driven by their research. I mean, by their publicity department because it's, a, it's related to funding. Some organizations are exceptional at it. They have really good internal processes. They bring in good referees. Others are like, oh, we're so excited about this. We want to get this out there. And I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, hey, we found something weird. We don't know what this is. We're curious to find out versus, hey, we, we found this thing and we're pretty sure that it's blank. And it's like, well, that's a big, that's a big leap. Who did you talk to? Well, we, we, we handled it. It's like, did you? That's it was that, pretty that's so tough because like even the people who discovered it very likely like if they were to speak directly they would say we found anomalous readings it very likely is error we're going to have to do some research to you know replicate the results or whatever however that does not get you paid what gets you paid is if true these results would indicate that a lot of money should come to 
These well, guys. but I mean, there's difference between this. There's the point at which a paper's published. There's the pre-publication phase, etc. And I would say that do you have pre-publication and prior to that, pre-publication at semi-public and prior to that, there's a lot of opportunity to bring in people in. And if you rush it to, if you rush a paper out or rush it to pre-publication and publicity on it, problems can arise the more crazy the nature of the thing is. And uh, and but the reputational cost and like the fact that you're making fun of NASA right now, how dare you, Brian? Brings up. <laughs> oh that, that my we, word! Yes, we, we yeah, went yeah this Bryce. With, why did you do that? Yeah, screw, the, screw we those guys. <laughs> Terra firma, baby. Terra firma. <laughs> yeah. Flat Earth. Uh, <laughs> we went through this with like remember, the Martian meteor and all those other things. Right. Where after the fact, we're like eh, a little bit, you know, too. And, and I think that within a department of then. You know the arsenic thing there. Like, I, I, I wouldn't, I would have. I think would have been fine if it had been an earlier sort of stage. Or it leaked out like, oh, I found this cool thing. It's just signs of this because then you very quickly you'll get like we did within twenty four hours blog posts of people explaining, no, this is what you found. Right. Well, and, and I guess I guess what I'm what I'm trying to evaluate is even when you know you're in a bubble, uh, that doesn't change the fact that the bubble is going to expand. And it doesn't change the fact that there's going to be a right moment to sell. Uh, and yes, I'm thinking about this in a GameStop uh, circumstance. Um, and informationally, I assume the same thing is true because like you have something curious. Uh, it's indetermined whether or not this is uh, replicable. Um, at some point, there is a perfect right moment to release the information and get all of the credit, uh, considering that in the scientific community, credit is a currency uh, in and of itself. Um, it's 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 a tricky game, and 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 I don't want to be again. Uh, please, nobody take away that I was or, or take away from this that I was pooping on NASA. I'm just saying that in that case, they moved too fast, and as a mm -hmm. result, um, us, the outside influences. All, all the all the people who are trying to get the clicks and get all the interest and get all the attention are are going to want to push for certain types of headlines and sometimes it's not prudent to to hand those to people. Yeah, and I it's and I would I would I think Justin brought up and I think we've alluded to is a big problem with this is the science journalist. We've talked before about the Gelman effect, you know, and you know Brian, you always say it very eloquently, and that is. You know Michael Crichton reading the newspaper and uh, with his understanding of things like computers and medicine realizes everything else is accurate except for this. Marie Gelman with his understanding of uh, you know uh, you know archaeology and physics is his, his actual expertise. You know and he says, well they got these things wrong, but everything else is probably right. And then the two of them talking and realize, oh wow. Right. We both have, have a blind right. spot. And that is that is something I like to bring up as often as possible because. Um, uh, given that the focus of Michael Crichton's interest before his passing was largely, you know, climate based and history will probably not be terribly kind to uh, his analysis at the time. There are things that he was saying at that time that, oh, my God, I think are so important. Like he pointed out the fact that um, sure is curious that uh, people who are doing research and who know who's paying for their research tend to come out with conclusions that exactly match what you would expect the people paying for the research. He advocated for double-blinded funding for science, which yep. is not anything I've ever heard a single scientist, single researcher, nobody. It took it took the the guy who did Jurassic Park to say it and I've never heard it again. And I understand like why would you? But 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 God, I would love blinded funding for things where people were doing the research not knowing who is writing their checks. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's hard because a lot of funding comes in the form of facilities and everything else. You know, I, I was at a facility and, you know, some person was mocking the idea of a conspiracy theory about getting paid to do the research she does. And I'm looking around at this multi-million dollar facility and this guy's, I'm like, <laughs> do, do you know what it would look like? <laughs> you know, and, and like, I thought I think he's in some conspiracy theory, but I'm like, you know, the fact that you have a job studying this, the fact that you're in a facility dedicated to this, the fact that you just showed us this million dollar piece of equipment that's pretty useless, and you're like, oh, I want to know who's who's paying me. I'm like, <laughs> are you a volunteer here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, I wonder, one of the things that really is kind of on the cusp of, 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 of happening that we're seeing now is the buying power of 
the collected populace, right? And and we've long looked at universities and some private institutions as the forefront for scientific research. I, you know, I I I, I wouldn't be surprised if a a private company was formed where you saw some of this kind of stuff, where where where, where you saw. I mean, it would take it would be a tremendous effort to get it going, but when you look at the amount of money that can come in when the idea is right and and how fast it comes in on the internet, I don't know if there's many sectors of our society that are going to be untouched by that that have largely been dominated by kind of like fixed income from certain usual suspects. I can see. You know, the, uh, you know, when it comes to like, you know, science funding probably shouldn't be like Kickstarter where we only fund what we think is, and that's what you're saying, is that we're only fund what we like. And that's one of the problems we have, like orphan diseases and stuff where too few people get it. There's not enough research to do it that could be solvable. Right. But I could see, I mean, I could see the idea to your point, though, like kickstarting an organization. Well, you know, hey, yeah. you want, you know, uh, we want to start a foundation for the next five years to do a thing. I, I suppose what I'm wishing for is some kind of version of a VPN for funding when it comes to scientific research where, you know, just, just, uh, it's difficult to know who's writing the checks and your, um, your incentives are aligned so that you do the research and report the, your findings without having any idea whether or not it'll benefit or be a detriment to you. Um, uh, and, and the, the, pro- the, pro- the problem that- is, is that you are stripping out some of the reason why people write those checks. Correct. Correct. Like, like, so, so you, that would be a require some kind of behavior modification or honor, right. On the donor side where it's like, all right, so you're not going to get your name on a building. You're not going to, to, to be noted as a patron of science at this facility. Well, but you might, maybe we can subset that by, having a gigantic publicity arm that uh, well thank you a newly minted billionaire brian brushwood for your very generous 50 million dollar uh, contribution to the blind science institute well it, it's, like i suppose what i'm imagining is some version of like a blue check kind of thing where it's like um like if exxon uh says good news global warming not very bad then, uh, well, it's an Exxon funded study that gives a result that will benefit Exxon. So, you know, we don't believe it. We don't have any institution to sort of blue check that where it's like, and you know, it's not just us saying that because like they didn't even know it was our money that was funding it. Um, I, I, it, it, hard, it does feel hard. like there's some kind of middle ground that, that could happen. I would say the hard part of the hard, and I, I mean, I like the core idea. I think the hard part, a couple places comes into fact is that one is we put as the, the public puts way more faith into certain institutions than we do. They don't understand. They'll be like, Oh, well it was from this university. So I know it's not biased. And you're like, you, Oh, you mean this place with a $50 billion endowment that is basically a corporation in disguise. They're not biased, you know, like, and it's like, Oh, well, cause they don't people up. They don't think of universities in these places as companies, which they are. Um, and they just have this idea of, you know, uh, I would say with worth ethics, ethics than your average company charging students, you know, $500 well, and, and, for and I, a textbook written by the professor. All of a sudden, I'm thinking that's also a two way street because in a world where nobody knows how they're funded, um, that also opens up the opportunity where it's just like uh, uh, Americans, super racist study says. And it's like, well, who paid for that study? No way to know. Can't know. Just Americans are the super most racist people. Yeah, and yeah. It's, yeah. I would say that I would think that there was a there was some a, a really great paper that caused some waves, and then people quickly forgot about it because it was very inconvenient. And that was in psychology, where they went a group went and tried to redo a number of psychological experiments. Oh and yeah, found yeah. Out uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the reproducibility uh, uh, disaster, where it's like fewer yeah. than one third of. Pretty much everything anybody has ever <laughs> released a paper on seemed to be re- re- reproducible, which is uh, problematic. 
Yeah, and, and there can be factors like sometimes you hear about, we try to reproduce blank. I've seen this sometimes too, like this doesn't work. And you're like, man, you didn't use the same conditions as the other one. You hit that, you yeah. hit all that bullet, some of the big bullet points. And that's a frustrating thing to see though too. But that reproduce me thing was powerful. And I would love to see, imagine an institute that says, yeah, we're going to take random studies. We're going to pull random research studies out of a hat and we're going to put together teams and we're going to try to replicate them. That's, you know, just a, that's a really good comparison because the same thing that I'm, that I'm advocating for is very unsexy and doesn't seem like it will add anything to anything. Uh, just like the idea of, of replicating previously established science see, is very unsexy and doesn't seem like it would add anything. By the way, that also sounds like the fastest way to make you the least popular uh, person in the whole science in community, your, in right? Your, in your field, right? Yeah. All you'd be doing, <laughs> no, nobody would 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 count their hits, right? They would only get butt hurt over their you, misses. You would be you would be James Randi at a psychic convention. Like, who who <laughs> wants to hang out with this guy? Yeah, and I think that's sort of the value is that. You know, when you know that person's out there and you're writing your research paper and you're, 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 you're fudging your numbers and there's issues like there was a thing that came up. I've seen a couple of times of like, you know, people, they look at it, images in research papers and noticing how often these images are the same images used over and over. And it's like, and you find out that probably the real story was the research was real, but they lost their images, but they knew they wouldn't get published without the images. And it's like, well, yeah. it's a little lie. And I think that's the problem is, is we we accept so many little lies because we say, hey, it's necessary. Now we're liars. So so maybe and, yeah, maybe and there's that, a... and that's and that's such a zero sum field, right? Where you got to get yeah. published, so you get funding, so you you and and there's the collective network of let's keep this thing afloat. We don't want a scandal. We don't want to fall short because then the, the, the tide will lower for all of us. Maybe a middle ground might be the equivalent in the hacking world of, of the bug bounty, where it's like there's a fund that is made where it's like somebody go out there, catch somebody with a conflict of interest uh, and expose it or whatever. I mean, unfortunately, uh, and, and I could I could see from your reaction, Andrew, that that that. Uh, you see the same risk I see, which is the uh, possibility of a, you know, a purity spiral of, of nobody's uh, ever pure in anything. Well, yeah. And, and who you, you pay for the bug bounty yourself because you want to make sure your software's free of bugs. Yeah. Right. The, you're incentivized towards it. If a university was like, Hey, help us catch our researchers cheating. It's like, nobody's going to work there. <sighs> Yeah, the, yeah, it doesn't make things better for the university when when somebody finds out that but they're being I think, paid. I think that I think if we put money into like you know testing replication things like this, because I think if you know uh, to avoid mono, you know mono thought, um, eh, something, you know, man, science one unpredictable. I'll, I'll, mm. Well, I'll give you. Mm. I'll, I'll, I'll make a statement here, like, um, who can be really awful are scientists. I love science, been around scientists my whole life. And when it comes to it, when it comes to criticism, when it comes to outsiders criticizing or whatever, the response is horrific. Uh, right now, the, the who is supposed to having this team investigate the origins of COVID in China. And there is one of the avenues that should be explored is the idea of a lab leak. But you saw many people in the scientific community just jump and just criticize that idea. Oh, you're trying to say it's a man-made bioweapon. There's no evidence of that. It's like, no, the words were lab leak, which has happened historically in here in the U.S. and China. It's a thing that can happen. That should be an avenue of pursuit. Which, and there was such a knee to, reaction to pursuing. To clarify, uh, lab leak, if I am understanding it correctly, does not mean it was made in a lab and then leaked to the world. What it means is samples were mishandled and what was supposed to be a, a pristine uh, enclosure uh, mm -hmm. was 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 per, uh, uh, permeated? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Permeated. That, that basically. Yeah. yeah, which happens all the time. We've had this happen at the most some of the most advanced labs in the U.S. Lab leaks happen. And even the pursuing that as an idea. So here, here we are. It's February. It is February. It is a year later, and the first team is officially being allowed into China to go investigate the origins of this. And even then, they've been spending days at the museum. They had their visas revoked and went through all these hurdles. They're going to be able to do limited interviews. A effing year. A year to allow uh a team to go... 
I, 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 I poked around a few weeks ago, and by all accounts, according to, you know, Google, uh, China for reals said no more COVID around here. COVID who? What? And then they, and then they said, whoops, I guess one. Yep. Just one, just one recently. Um, what is, what is our official position on trusting the narrative as I just spoke it to you? <laughs> Cause I'm looking at a graph right now that goes from very high to zero. <laughs> If we we live in a democracy with a press that's supposed to be antagonistic, and we had a New York state, we just found out that double the number of people died in nursing homes than we thought, because a governor was able to suppress reports. What kind of powers but, do they have in China? Slightly more. So, so uh, and um, if if you've watched The Wire, it sounded to me like the governor uh, was basically juking the stats, uh, miscategorizing deaths. Like 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 the deaths are on yes. record, but yes. they're like, well, he hit his head. Well, yes, but also he had COVID and was in. A, 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 no, no, this this was this was specifically about nursing homes. So, got it. Uh, one of Governor Cuomo's legitimate criticisms even early on when he was getting a lot of press was a decision to allow covid patients back into nursing homes mandating them to go back to nursing homes uh where they were in long-term care uh as it stands now if indeed post vaccine we are even if we see more flare-ups they will not be as deadly as the one that we just saw uh that might have been the most deadly decision uh, made by any kind of government official in this American crisis, as the, the the number that die that have died in New York State nursing homes is as of last week, or was as of last week, more than people that have died in the state of Arizona. Full stop. Like just in nursing homes, if this if this stat is correct, more people died in New York State nursing homes than died totally over the last year in 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 the entire state of Arizona. So it's like what when you talk about who, you know, where the information comes in and how it is disseminated uh, uh I you know, uh, what the United States government is going to say about China's numbers is going to be complicated by the fact that there is a larger relationship that needs to be maintained. What I will say as a private citizen is uh, there are two countries that are are to me of a substantial size enough that I think that we should be drawing some kind of lessons from that I totally don't trust their numbers and they are Russia and China. China first and foremost. Like the the idea, the concept uh, of 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 their numbers to me are uh, just out and out fiction. So, um. Yeah. It's it's just one point in California we're not even able to get the whole health data and the statements are like well people won't know how to interpret it whatever and it's like all right so what's yeah going that on was in that China? was that was that was that was about the lockdowns where they yeah. totally rebuilt uh why the metrics to lock places down in California and then said all right well we're gonna determine it on ICU uh, availability. That's the new metric. It's not going to be spread. It's not going to be deaths. It's not going to be anything but ICU availability. And we're going to break you up into uh, a, a Hunger Games style, five different areas that are hospital networks that are vaguely geographical, despite the fact that Southern California is literally just going to be one half of the state and there'll be four other uh, uh, things. But we're going to not guide it on the real time ICU uh, availability. It'll be on a model we make that projects four weeks out. And it was the Associated Press. This was not a muckraking, like this was not a conservative thing. This wasn't red state. It's the Associated Press that broke the story that uh, not only would the government not be sharing it, but they would not be sharing it because they, by their own words, were afraid that the public would misinterpret the data. Uh, yeah. Uh, and that is uh, what I like to call 
the fast track to get your ass recalled. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I forgot that's all happening on the political side. Uh, yeah. plus, plus, also, there's the tactical. Uh, I, I, I don't know how it took me this long to learn it, but within the last few weeks, I learned that like ICUs by definition are designed because they are intensive care. Like uh, the, the, they're meant to, by definition, be almost always full all of the time. So uh, uh, any edge case, like uh, at any given time, there's 100% of people who are in the hospital and whoever the worst 10% are go to the most intensive care unit of the hospital. So as a result, they're literally built to be full all the time. And so uh, that seems kind of like a garbage metric that does no good, but sounds good uh, when you're giving a speech. Uh, but, you know, I, I would agree. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 so that's and that's what so that's what we're going through here with the free press with free social media. Well, we did. Uh, that's another story. Uh, we used to be able to talk about these things freely without it getting suppressed. But uh, uh, that's what we're going through here. Yeah, China. Yeah, I'm sure I, I believe anything they say because, like, you know. <laughs> You know, okay, what do you do okay. when you're so, a governor uh, there can and just, you can put hey, reporters uh, in the basement, you know? Mm, yeah. All right, look, I, 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 yeah, there's so many things I want to ask, but most importantly, I want to get paid to do this show. So can we talk about our friends over at Patreon.com? Indeed. Patreon.com slash weird things. Head on over there right now and uh, make sure that you keep this show uh, loud, live, and independent for you weekly. Head on over there right now. Patreon.com slash weird things. Get the after things podcast sooner than anybody else with your private custom RSS feed entered into the podcatcher of your choice. That is patreon.com slash weird things. Yeah. So again, the, the problem with the China thing, like we don't know. And nobody, we are, we're not even able to get research teams in there and, and they're able to take measures we wouldn't do. And we don't know, there were not a lot of videos of nursing homes and prisons and other stuff when they were going through their outbreak. And they have entire cities, like they would notice an outbreak in a smaller city, they just shut it out. They yeah. literally put police on the, on the borders there and maybe they were able to contain it better. I mean, that's, they, we yeah, just don't know. I very much, I very much believe that if America was the kind of country that had the will and the makeup to shut off borders between states early on, we might have done more to contain it. The problem is we don't, we won't, and we can't. So like uh, 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 there is, uh, uh, there are tools in the toolbox in an authoritarian top-down government like China has that we simply don't. Right. And it doesn't matter, you know, who you think is the best party to do it. Nobody really has that. And and even beyond that, we saw pushback on soft versions of that really loud, really fast. Not to not to make this into a Governor Cuomo of New York sucks thing, but when there was initial talk of just shutting off flights from New York to Florida or Florida didn't want New Yorkers coming down because of the spread uh, governor Cuomo freaked out about it. And said that that was absolutely not going to stand. He wasn't going to subjugate his citizens to not being able to travel. And that's where we are. And I don't think that that's necessarily a, a political issue. That's an American freedom issue that we, 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 we focus on. Yep. I, it's I, it's one of I, those things that <laughs> if you play a lot of Sid Meier's Civilization, it's like, sorry, bro, it's a fact. When you flip over to communism, you get a plus two multiplier to all of your production output. Uh, no, you, you, you can't win a cultural victory, but it'll certainly make a lot more things for you to invade other people, whatever. I... Yeah, in police states, you don't have as much crime. Because <laughs> you know, uh, technically everybody's already guilty, too. My, I guess my big rant, I'm going to say this again. Had we been telling people to wear masks when we knew they should have been wearing masks, I think we would have had way lower numbers. That's, that's the most inexcusable thing to me. It's one thing to say, let's debate how much to restrict people's freedom. It's another thing to actively lie to people about masks. That's, 
which is what we did. Yeah. I, I, I want the, somebody to prove me wrong. The, no, you know? no, I mean, I mean, uh, if we want to take a quick minute on the the noble lie and how much we all hate it, uh, uh, just to check, uh, still, hate it, still hate it, still hate it, still hate it, still hate it. Okay, it's yeah. unanimous. We all hate the noble lie. Uh, the the idea of of uh, just uh, mm, mm, well, the people can't be trusted with the truth. Yeah, and, and I think it. I think if we we're going to point a thing that, that may have cost the most lives, the one policy decision, I think that was it. And it was, well, we're doing the noble lot. No, you're you're not. You don't have your facts, and you're speaking out of your area of expertise. And now we're being told to wear double masks. And, yeah. And and so like, so so what's the story on that? Uh, I I hadn't heard about it until like <laughs> yesterday. Well, you know, I mean the the. Obviously, more things obstructing, you know, things from getting into your mouth or your lungs is better. And so the idea if you wear a double mask, then, you know, theoretically safer. Uh, I don't. Uh, and, and I think even people learning how to wear masks properly is so like you see people with masks that, you know, they're breathing through the sides and you're like, eh, it's better than nothing. But um, yeah, it's just it's another. So I just might once. Yeah. The, once the, people the... said. Yeah, the, the the issue with this specific thing is that there are now variants of the disease, which I've got questions about exactly how we are covering these sorts of things. But uh, uh, the South African variant specifically is far more contagious, uh, and so therefore there is now a renewed push to A, wear proper masks, and B, if you have not great masks, then wear two of them. Uh, and And I think that that has caught on not only for some of our uh citizenry for which is there is no level of safety that is too safe but also because we're all kind of scared and and look when when as we pull up on the year anniversary of this uh and we think we're emerging but how many times have we thought we were emerging before now we have at least hard evidence with 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 the vaccine i think people are uh you know we're 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 getting a little squirrely here getting a little weird yeah. so uh let's talk about stonks oh, yeah man <laughs> uh that that's a that's slightly less uh of a tangled knot to to unpack because i'm i'm still i'm doing my best as somebody who has no no dog in any fight, or I would like to think. In general, I tend to be on the people's side. In in general, I tend to be uh, libertarian and anti-government and anti-structure and anti-authoritarian. Um, but even then, this all kind of sounded an awful lot like stock manipulation, but the people thinking it's okay because it's little guys. But the little guys is really Robin Hood who was running a casino and letting people borrow money from Robin Hood and then gamble with the money, and it's Robin Hood that's coming out ahead. I, I, I have no idea what to think about any of this, and I really want to know what you guys know, because, because man, have I tried to wrap my mind around this, this insane hysteria that sounds an awful lot like what led up to uh, the Great Depression. <laughs> Well, first things first, Brian, uh, uh, allow me to move on my very distinguished mahogany mantle uh, a little room so I can add financial expert to my now growing list <laughs> next to virology expert and <laughs> governmental expert. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, because uh, uh, we are all now stock experts. I'm, I'm so glad that we could all gather for this quarterly fiduciary uh, meeting uh, where noted stock experts can, can discuss this stuff. Actually, Andrew's probably the most well-versed in, in, in this kind of stuff. So I would, I, I would, I would let him uh, lead the convo here. I'm hesitant because I do not want to portray myself as an expert because I, and and the thing is about the, th the funny thing about finance too is that it is very complicated and you'll feel like and sometimes I feel stupid like I don't know this and then you'll talk to somebody's investment banker like yeah I didn't know what that meant either I'm like oh okay um, quick back all right so here how about this how about this before before we start let's all make a, a fart noise with our mouth so everybody <laughs> knows how serious they should take this all yeah, right so here we go three Doc, two more like one <laughs> all right so uh, all right there we go. Uh, I I have made most of my living 
for, for a good part of my adult life was made through investing. That's I don't talk about it that much. I may be brought up here a few times. That's mainly been my primary way of supporting myself. Meaning when I make money from one thing was early on the magic book publishing DVDs. When there was surplus, I would put it into stocks. And I was, I was very lucky, very, very, very lucky in what I was able to do and invest in and whatnot. And so that has been most of my life is how I've supported myself. Um, but I'm not a day trader and I'm not a guy that's like, ah, let me get in my computer here and I'm going to time the market. I was just like, huh, Pixar seems like a good company. I'll buy that. I'm like, I like Apple. I'll buy Apple. Yeah. Teslas are cool. Yeah. I'll buy Tesla. Yeah, you know, you're, that's been. You're, 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 a, you're a fundamentals kind of guy. You're a Warren Buffett. Very, like that makes sense. I understand Graham. it. Seems like it's going to yep. go somewhere. I'm going to buy it forever. Yep, 100%. Like Benjamin Graham, intelligent investor, read that much junk. I have on my stock app, I will show you companies I've been tracking for years that I'm like, yeah, they're going to go up, but I'm not going to invest in them because I don't understand their fundamentals enough. And I'd be like, I've heard Facebook IPO. My friends, you can invest in Facebook. I'm like, nope. I'm like, why? Like, well, I know they're going to make money. I know they're going to increase in value. But part of what they have to do is they have to increase like the daily active user retention and these other things, which to me gets a little bit hanky. And I just like, I don't feel... I don't like that model that really gets that parasitic of people's attention and stuff. And so that was just, you know, I have a, several companies like that, that I've been like, I just, and squeamish. So anyhow. Sure. Uh, well, and, 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 and uh, j j uh, so, so uh, in our story so far, we have Andrew who understands buy and hold fundamental uh, investments. Uh, this is productive and will be of a benefit to society. I, I think it's fair to say that if SpaceX were publicly traded, we'd all be buying it because we think they're going to get rockets to everywhere and that'll be good. Um, on the flip side, as I understand uh, market dynamics, there is a function to all the negative Nellies. There's a reason uh, on, the, on the craps table of the stock market, there's a don't come bar, uh, which, which uh, is never the popular guy, but... He uh, uh, offers a, a negative uh, uh, externality or expectation. Yeah, it's getting to get, it, get it to the point that like one of the things that I learned early on and what helped me was I used to watch I used to watch these shows, CNBC and stuff, but I'd listen to the person who's head of Sun Fund. Sometimes it's a hedge fund which bets a can bet against companies. It's one of the ways in which they do it. I'd listen to the person who was running some fund or some investment group get up there and give their spiel. I'm like, oh, that makes sense. Hold on. And then one day I had this sort of thing like. Why the F is he out here talking about it unless he's trying to do something to the price of the stock? And I'm like, oh, that's the sole purpose. If he says he's excited about a thing, he wants everybody else to be excited and go buy it. If he thinks the stock company looks bad because he's got a short position, a short position, basically you're betting the company's going to fall. You know, you, you know, you, somebody else can, will explain shorts better than I will. But the point is, is you're, you're betting that it's going to fall. He wants it to fall, and he's trying to spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt, which is what a lot of these financial news channels actually do, is everybody there is trying to sell you on something, either the success of something they're invested in or the failure of something they're going to profit from the failure of. And once I looked at it through that lens, I became a much better investor because then I'm like, oh, yeah. people watch this, and they're persuaded. I watched them just dump on Apple for years, and I just kept buying. I watched the same thing happen with, like, Tesla. And then I watched, you know, I'm like, point is, you get people who go on CNBC who, let's say, if you have a hedge fund, and you're going to say, we're going to bet this company's going to fall because maybe the fundamentals of the company are, aren't that good. You know, GameStop, it's not a sexy company. I would not normally invest in GameStop because uh, I don't – with people buy their games online now. There's not a lot of need for a GameStop. And you can see, like, this company is probably headed for a fall. So you had a hedge fund that took a huge position, placed these bets that its stock price was going to fall substantially. And they talked about it. And there was a thing that was noticed about, and like, yeah, this GameStop looks like it's going to fall. Looks like it's going to fall. And then Wall Street Bets, the committee on Reddit, some other people are like, hey, uh, yeah, these people are really have a really big position against GameStop falling. And their opinion is they watch these hedge funds manipulate the market all the time. And with the, with the able help of the media, and they're like, well, what if we just buy a bunch of GameStop stock and keep the price up, which is what they yeah. did. And so, so the, yeah, please. There, there, there is a video that got sent to me, and uh, uh, I would encourage people to find it. But it was it's it's Jim Cramer back in like two thousand and six, oh, and he's yeah. he's uh, uh, doing something for the street, and he's just like talking about like what you do as a hedge fund guy, and him as a former hedge fund guy, and 
talking about stock manipulation via the media, very specifically. And he's using a famous example, the iPhone. And he's saying, all right, if you're in the negative as a hedge fund, so so now you're, you're uh, people that have entrusted their money with you, they're looking at your negative for the year and they're like, what the hell? I'm going to pull all my money out with these guys. They're jokers. Uh, I'll, I'll put it somewhere else or put it somewhere safe. Or you're at like a single digit uh, uh, up, you know, up percentage. You got to make sure that you are eking out gains for your clients, no matter how you do it by the end of the year. And so he was talking about the iPhone. If you have Apple, what you do is you push down Apple. How do you do that? Well, and this is word for word, what Jim Cramer is telling this guy. You say that uh, uh, you, you put in some positions and it's going to take you a couple million dollars to do it that would seem to indicate that you know that bad news is coming for Apple in the next couple of weeks. And then you call up uh, uh, people at the Wall Street Journal and you say, yeah, you know, talk to my friends at AT&T and Verizon. They are going to stick with Motorola. They're going to stick with LG. They don't like the phone uh, from Apple. It's way too expensive. They're not going to go with it. Uh, you know that will bump the market down. Apple will sell. You'll make money on those transactions. It's literally just the day-to-day -day movements that you're doing, and you're stacking those gains on top. Now, at that point, if Apple actually goes down, then you can also then buy the other side of it, knowing that there's nothing wrong with the iPhone, that the iPhone will definitely get announced at Macworld, that, that you, are, you are just creating a, a, a bunch of, <coughs> of, of noise for no reason. The fact that that's the case means that you are in a position now where information is so diluted where CNBC doesn't matter as much anymore, but yet still behaves the same kind of way that the wall street bets community. And I'm not naive. I think that there is also other hedge funds that realize that there's another side to this are going to now make some of these folks pay, but there's an enemy here and we're seeing not unlike in the same way that, Brian, you and I identified that people were frustrated with hearing about Fifty Shades of Grey right? Uh, and wanted a, a way that they could register their, or they found it funny because this is a ripe target that they could buy, even if they didn't know who the hell we were, they just saw us on Reddit or they saw us on, on Twitter with our little video that they could register their thing. Boom, they can go do it. This is that writ large with a lot more money and and the villain is something a lot more palpable than you know a a a, a smut author or a book that you feel is kind of over uh overhyped this is resentment about the 2008 crash this is media manipulation this is populism there's a lot that's kind of going in here united by memes of crying anime girls and terminator uh, robot i would and if there was a, a villain, it's not quite a clip. I would say there's bad practice. If there was a villain to it, I would say how little the media tells us how much they're manipulated. That story that, you know, about Jim Cramer, about this, we don't hear those people outed. We don't hear those things outed very much. You know, the ties that financial newspapers have to people giving them at leaks, the role in which they play in feeding into it. Because it's like, hey, here's a mechanism. I can give this person bad info and my stock's going to dip. If a reporter realizes they're lied to, they're not going to write an article. You know, Jim Cramer had called me. The reason this happened was anonymous source who I won't name, but still, this is they're never going to tell you that. And that's part of the problem is that you know, they get duped. Yeah. You know, and then we're left, who's left holding the bag? You know, the, the I mean, you know, the quote, the retail investor, which is. You know. I do think, I mean, to me, this is a media story. This is, yeah. uh, you know, the, the, the backlash that when, when you when you were on Wall Street Bets and I am, I'm not a regular Wall Street Bets reader. I'm just like every other Jim Moke. As soon as, you know, the, 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 the car started flaming, I rubber neck to see what was going on. But the stuff that I grabbed there was that there a, a lot of the resentment was you don't control the narrative anymore. We're controlling the narrative now. 
and you're going to be forced to cover us, which gets us into another element of a larger media trend, which is online people do control the narrative. Twitter controls the narrative. Reddit now can control the narrative because media, the, the, the venerable gatekeepers of our age, aren't sure enough in their own decisions that they have to look to the public to say, well, what are they I mean, interested in? We live in a world where a company or a few companies were able to unperson a president. <laughs> like that is unreal to me. Uh, for now. For now. We for now. See. Yeah, we'll we see. Will, we will see. But but no, no, that's an interesting topic. And I know we're I mean, this gets us into the political, but like in terms of just the media element of it, we're going to see how much they can unperson and whether or not the denial of the platforms that he had before just means that we're now all going to have to pay attention to a new platform, be it a traditional social media one or something else beyond the pale. Uh, what is golden is this. If people care, then media, the way that we have thought it, which used to be them kind of like, we used to think of media as sort of like a, a, a bespoke farmer's market. We had all these very smart people that would go out into the totally untamed wilderness and they would find the things that mattered. They would find the things that mattered. Now, behind the scenes, it's a lot like we understand it now. They they got information from people that they knew, but that was the that was the idea. Now they're all just buying rubber bouncy balls because they know that rubber bouncy balls are popular because they see it on these social media sites. They see metrics to it. They and 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 that's a powerful change. That is a very powerful change. Also, if there's any question about whether or not former president Donald Trump was a fan of after things. I think it's been resolved because he would know that we would have been pushing him to email, 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 get them email addresses and you wouldn't have been deplatformed. Well, never too late to start. Yeah, you know? no, I, I, I think, I think he's, uh, I think, I think, I think they're okay. Considering the three emails I've gotten since he's been in Mar-a-Lago about all of his comings and goings. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 his email game is, is, is okay. Uh, so there's a lot more kind of going on in the story and it's complex. Last night, Elon Musk was on clubhouse, which is the other, like the two, the two big stories of this, of so far 2021, I think have been, uh, wall street bets, GameStop and uh clubhouse with is just sort of exploding. I deeply in... regret accepting the invitation to clubhouse that I got. Um, so far clubhouse has been nothing but clubhouse announcing which of my friends are getting on clubhouse and asking me to uh talk to them and then uh that and getting in bed last night a uh, notification came in just at the right wrong moment as i was tapping play on my go to sleep uh, uh podcast and sudden suddenly i just hear five people go whoa brian brushwood is here oh brian brushwood and i mumble Guys, I hit the wrong button. I'm going to bed. <laughs> and that's now part of the public rep record on Clubhouse. Uh, so if people don't know Clubhouse, Clubhouse is basically an audio chat room. Yes. It is pretty much the beginning and end of it. It is an audio-focused chat room. And the weird thing for me uh, is that I only see people, I only see uh, people say creators should be on Clubhouse. And I don't see any consumers or users of social media say i really want to be on clubhouse or I'm it is all I'm like on clubhouse so that i could see anything right um we we have been approached and we've had people in the chat room ask us if we want a clubhouse but it's like as i wouldn't use it i definitely wouldn't use it personally <laughs> and i don't I don't see anyone else asking uh, for this. We have Discord. We have voice chats. There's Twitter. Guys, there's no Twitter. Got, like, there's a million. Guys got people with these microphones in front of themselves who get a broadcast <laughs> to people on a daily basis are going, eh, Clubhouse, what's the, what, uh, do you sure. need, what do you get out of uh, okay. this? Okay, sure, no, sure. Price, price, price. Never make that mistake. Never make the but we got a thing mistake. Oh, that okay, is, but. That, mm -hmm. that, that, that has always been defeated. There's always uh, like, but it's just blank. But yes, it might still uh -huh. fail. It might still fail, 
It might have a moment and then die because the only thing that's happening on Clubhouse is a bunch of people on Clubhouse talking about how much they like Clubhouse and, and it doesn't quite find the same utility. But the one thing that will always fail is but we already got a thing. That, that's if, fine. If that's fine. That's thing, not my big point. That's not uh, my big point. My big yeah. point is I'm not seeing anyone say, I want to be using Clubhouse. I keep seeing people say, you should be a creator on Clubhouse. And turns out today, you know, they can't said Clubhouse will be like a Patreon thing. Well, won't that be fun? So for our listeners who don't know Clubhouse, like it, imagine kind of being able to like do live streaming, but audio. And you can bring people into a room. We have a room. A bunch of people can go in there and join you. You can do moderate. It's like video, like video sort of hangouts or whatever, but just audio only. And I'm a big believer that sometimes the way to create a great product is to remove the extra stuff. And I don't live stream a lot because I don't want to have to comb my hair or whatever. But if I'm like, oh, I could just hop into here and start a room and start a conversation with a bunch of people. There have been a lot of forms of this in the past. I think this may catch on. I did listen to the Elon Musk one last night. It was great. You know, he brought in Vlad, what's his face for Robin Hood to come in and explain himself, you know, in the middle of, you know, it's this very, you know, meta sort of thing. And so I thought that was cool. And I've done a couple of clubhouse conversations with people. It's fun. It's a different thing, you know, and I think, you know, some people are in a chat room really like it. I think for us who have, who can just flip a switch and have an audience, it's like, well, why do I need to buy fly coach? I got a well, jet. Like, like, like for, for me, it's in that mushy middle where it's like, there is a, a sanitization of what I think and say and how I present myself when I know I'm being broadcast, when I know mm -hmm. I'm in public, when I publish a tweet, that kind of thing. Yeah. There is similarly a level of intimacy and directness that I afford people who I'm on a phone call with uh, because I know it would be majorly messed up if they're going to secretly record this phone call and then and, and send it out. Part of the reason I don't do a lot of audio on Discord or or Clubhouse outside of by accident as I'm getting into bed is because it's in that mushy middle where it's like I don't know which of my heuristics to engage on that. Well, I think part of it is it's supposed to be a soft performance of an intimate space. So it's like the, the, the Elon Musk Robin Hood guy is a great example because what we really want is a private conversation between those two guys or what we really want is Elon Musk's thoughts when he's talking to him. And we want, we're curious to know, are they best friends? Are they acquaintances? Is Elon Musk really pissed at him? Like, there's all these kind of inherent questions that are almost subservient to, but also we want to be in the room. We want to be there. That's super cool. And Clubhouse makes and sells that. Uh, so the, 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 the less thought would be, okay, well, how do I look at this as a performance space as I would social media and more, oh, I wonder who we could get into a private clubhouse that would be a really cool conversation. If it was just, you know, uh, uh, you know, night attack and ice cream social having a conversation. And instead of us thinking of it as a podcast that we put out, we, we think of it more as like just a way that our audience could have a behind could, could be there for a behind the scenes sort of conversation. That's like, that's the, the, the thing they're selling. And I and suppose I'll, I'll double down on, Oh, uh, well, go ahead. Yeah, just the like the what's the difference? Okay, and I see the chat. We're having some of the conversation. What's the difference between this and Discord? Full confession. I do zero on Discord. I first popped in there. I'm like, I gotta follow a channel. I gotta do this. I'm like, eh, I don't care. Too complicated for me to think about this right now. Boom, done. I get Clubhouse. My friend invites me. Hey, we're having a chat. Oh, cool. The thing that drove Brian nuts was an easy feature for me because I'm like, oh, click. I'm in there. I didn't have to think. It was easy. It was super super easy. And we may. Once you navigate a layer of complexity, it becomes invisible to you, but it is still a barrier for other people. Yeah, it, it, um, I, Discord's I, hard. Discord's hard. Sure. Discord oh, yeah. is for super fans. Uh, and, and, but that's great because it's a great place for super fans to get exactly what they want and they can micro thread it and the communities can build exactly where they want to build. And there is a little bit of an art for, for, for the moderation to, to pair those options you know down to the exact right thing but it's not instant and, and, and i'll tell you what slack selena selena Ilink brought up a great point in here too because like i hopped on a conversation with a couple people i knew 
And then a friend of theirs hopped in and she started talking. She's interesting. And then somebody else came in and I'm like, oh, we're having an interesting conversation. Oh, you're cool. Click follow. Now I can go have a conversation with that other person. And it's so easy. It's so easy to network and to quickly find a group of people. It's I don't I don't spend time on it because it's addictive. And Brian, I have the same fear about you because like I pop, I started talking. I noticed somebody else popped in there and like, oh, BuzzFeed reporter. Um, yeah, <laughs> so right. Therefore, I mean, I have nothing more to say. Yeah. Uh, but that's but going forward, though, like I have a girlfriend that's on video camera all the time and I don't know when it's safe to hop out of the shower. I've learned to navigate that. I've learned to navigate that space because there is a tremendous value there. Yeah. You want to do picks? Yeah. You want know, to switch this entire podcast to Clubhouse? <laughs> Sorry, I, I I didn't mean to be on weird things. I was just going to bed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whoopsie doodle. <laughs> uh, hey, I got a pick. Yep, what's your pick? All the stonks talk. I had a hole in my uh, uh, viewership, and that is the. 2015 adaptation of the Michael Lewis tome, The Big Short. I watched it over the weekend for the first time. I watched it over the weekend for the first time. I'm so excited to get the only review I want, and I will now yield the floor to Brian because uh, regardless of the performances and the script, there is one thing that is for sure, which I think if you were to judge a movie solely by the metric of metaphors per minute, <laughs> uh, uh, the big short might be the greatest movie of all time. The person who loves mm. tortured, ridiculous metaphors the most is Brian Brushwood. So I'm curious to me watching it. I'm like, Brian either loves this movie or despises it. There's no zero ground. Um, <clears throat> uh, Hi, it's me, Metaphor King Brian Brushwood. <laughs> what did I think of the big short? Imagine me on top of a hill, untangling a Gordian knot. It was tedious. That's it for my Movie Minute review. It's me, Metaphor King Brian Brushwood. Um, it deserves a lot of credit for being watchable because I don't think anybody who read that book, which I did, would say, oh, here's a bunch of telegetic, you know, uh, uh, kind of things. And basically what they wrap the movie around is our heroes, for various reasons, are betting against the economy. But we want them to win. But that means that the economy's in shambles. They can't save the economy. They're just going to profit off of it but we're happy they're right because they are all moral and exposing right and we corruption. know we know that that at least one of them is a good guy because he feels real bad when he says yes <laughs> accept all the money i made press yeah. sell <laughs> He allows his he he doesn't actually press the sell button. He puts a shot glass on it and just cries until it fills up with enough weight, yes. like like the the dippy bird, and then yeah, presses exactly. the button. How you're, but I'll give you my take because everybody's asking for it. I know when people are asking, like Andrew, when are you going to tell us what you think of the Big Short? Um, yeah, uh, and I got a newsletter about what I think about the Big Short and. Like Adam McKay is the director. I think it's a really capable director. I think it's really good. I think the performances in it are really good. And I think they did yeah. a damn good job of taking a complex job and making, explaining it. But capital B U T is whenever that narrative is told, whoever is telling you this will choose who the heroes and villains are, depending upon where they are politically and philosophically. And Adam McKay is very much that way. And when you watch this, you're like, well, here's the bad guys. I'm like, well, I think perhaps, yes. Do we want to get into like how this whole system was created and the politicians and name names and stuff of people who passed this legislation and warned not to do this and what would happen? And, you know, no, we don't because some of those people I like and I don't want to hold them accountable. So we're not going to get into that part. Of it. I mean, like, I, you know, I watch I, the doc. 
that 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 didn't bother me either with this or with Vice. Like I, I, I enjoyed think you know Vice. The names, though, Brian, I don't think you're going. Why aren't you going to go after so and so? I don't think you're personally invested. Like I am Correct. going. Like there's a big part. Oh yeah, yeah. No, and and that is fair. That is fair. Like uh, I I love hearing crazy people I disagree with, and I love listening to them with all of my attention. And so in that case, I'm I'm not overly bothered with whether they get things right or wrong. I, I and I but I mean I like the performances. I love I like the movie yeah, yeah, a lot. Yeah. I just say my yeah, my caveat's just like, yeah, if you maybe spent a six minute, let's put Margot Robbie in a bathtub again and have her explain this part of it, I would think you were being completely fair and helping people understand the real roots of it. But boy, talk about lampshading the problem with your story. <laughs> It's like, this crap is so boring. We're going to call out the fact that we're going to put a naked lady in a bathtub and to explain it to you. <laughs> well, totally and, cool and then, totally cool. and then do it twice more. <laughs> right? Like, what? and that was, that was the moment. Like, I was like, oh, so it's not just like, oh, we're going to keep going back to Margot Robbie whenever anything's too crazy. It's, you know, it has the late uh, uh, Anthony Bourdain. And then, selena gomez and some dude um who who also explained stuff but uh uh yeah it's go having read the book i was curious how the movie would 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 uh uh turn out it it befuddled me so much that i never saw it until uh this weekend um it it, it deserves a lot of credit for how compelling the performances are and how well it's edited together that it doesn't just sort of like totally fall apart because it, it is, it, it's not only a complex story. It's also one of those things where they, they've, they've got to really put these like harsh signposts there to before you start realizing that the people you're watching are ghouls, <laughs> right? <laughs> Like the like like uh, Brad Pitt has to snap on his young wards, uh, for dancing because oh the thing that they're doing is rooting for the economy to totally crater and for and for people to lose their their shirts. But it's never really a moment where we feel morally ambiguous about the people we're following. We want them all to win, including somebody from Morgan Stanley in in uh, uh Ryan Gosling. So it's like. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Tedious. I, I liked, I liked the performances like Christian Bale. Great. Like he was great performance. Was, yeah. Yeah. Although but again, it's like, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, that Christian Bale performance, that's a great short film. <laughs> that is, that is I, mm, man. You could do a great twelve minutes and tell his entire story, and it would crush it. I sometimes I feel about these things too. Like there'll be stuff like I'll like things I don't necessarily agree with. Again, I'm I was against the stock market, the housing bubble crash. Let me make that very clear. <laughs> um, uh, I remember once I was talking to like some skeptics group, and a lot of people there were like you know non-believers like myself. And then in a conversation, people are like kind of like ripping on mel gibson's the passion and you know like oh that really oh the passion like that's ripping it and i'm like yeah, i mean it's a brutal kind of movie mel gibson's an amazing talented filmmaker and then a while later the conversation shifts to like the whale writer and how great the whale writer is because you know and i'm like and i like the whale writer too but they're both movies about religion and that was like the thing they were like oh this this really i can't stand religious movies but this one I'm okay with. And none of them believed in like, you know, the, the, the whale writer mythology, but it was just this sort of thing of like, they weren't aware. It wasn't a thing they were against. If you follow. Sure. 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 Yeah. They, 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 they perceived as an aesthetic appreciation. Uh, but really it was like um, a, a discomfort of getting something close to something like, like uh, you know, something that they didn't want to like or whatever. Yeah, and that was the thing. And I said, I and I made me, I made such like I'm, I'm gonna always separate like my views, my religious beliefs, my philosophical beliefs from when I consume art. I just want to, I if I, I can enjoy it on its own merits, then I'm fine with it, and it doesn't have to conform to my belief for me to go like, well, this is how I know the world works. So this is wrong. Reject it. I'll be like, man, this is wonderfully told. I don't agree at the point, but man, it's wonderfully told. And that was sort of going forward. Um, uh, but but the Passion of Christ is a pretty brutal movie to have to watch. Yo, I got a pick for yeah. you guys. Go. Uh, 
Go to your YouTubes right now, type in the words Emergent Beacon, and then click subscribe and thank me later. Uh, oh, yeah. Brent Hughes new, new has stuff. finally launched uh, his, his uh, uh, independent channel. And uh, uh, Brant, you've seen on Mono Rogue, he oftentimes does wonderful fact checking on us. He does these minute long science minutes on uh, Mono Rogue. And if you've ever wondered what happens if Brant just goes as Brant as he could possibly Brant for 30 minutes straight, uh, then, then you get Emergent Beacon, which is a real treat. Hold on. It's it's science, uh, you know, explaining. He's in this one. He's talking about the Einstein's cross, and he has a lot of really interesting, like this wine glass demonstration that he uses to actually physically model uh, an Einstein's cross is really fascinating. Yeah, and so he goes an into a lot cross, of depth. Uh, uh, for example, is a a galaxy that is inconveniently in between us and a quasar, and so the quasar looks like four different copies of the quasar. And we know it's the same quasar because they all have the same spectrographic f uh, fingerprint. And then like something crazy happens in one of them and we wait one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. And then we see the same thing happen in the other copy and the other copy and the other copy. And uh, uh, like that wine glass demonstration is uh, so effective and making you kind of s process how, how, how bendy space time is. Well, I don't think he's going to get the Dollar Shave Club sponsorship. What? Why is that? Because he's got a beard. Oh, got, got it. This okay. <laughs> yeah. No, this looks great. This is so good. This looks really, really great. Um, yeah, uh, oh, I'm, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so pumped to see Brant do it. Uh, I love the video. Everybody, go, uh, uh, give it as much love and support. Emergent Beacon or Beacon? Beacon. 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 Emergent, Emergent Beacon. Beacon. Go get it. Baby, Brant is such Holy a Holy cow, fan. he's already 2,000 subscribers. That's amazing. That's awesome. Congrats. Yeah, uh, that'll be my pick, too. There you go. He, nice. He's already up on mine by more, like 200 more from your screenshot. Mm, cool. Mm -hmm. Ah, 2.12. Uh, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, a diamond hands. Uh, never unsubscribe. Hold on forever, and it'll fix the world. <laughs> Andrew, do you have a pick? Uh, my pick is I I'm gonna I'm just gonna double down again. Like WandaVision continues to delight. Ooh, continues it was, it was a delight. good one this week. It's a good one every week, Brian. It's every week. Uh this one zagged harder than I <laughs> was prepared for, and it really delighted me. I liked it a lot. I would Mr. Let's go back to like the first episode, man. If it's just a slow burn like this, I'm all on board with this. Two episodes in, like, ah, I don't feel enough happened. Oh, was the blood burn too slow for you, Brian? Uh, no, but again, it's like, uh, look, that's the way rubber bands work is you pull them very tight for three episodes and then you let go and they snap very hard and it feels very exciting. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, Marvel realizing that they have the deep bench that they have and flexing on it, like, and just being like, you know, somebody I'd never watch agents of shield, but there were, I saw some folks in my timeline over the weekend that were like, Hey, did you like a bunch of Marvel people talking about some Marvel stuff? Then you'll love agents of shield. And it's like, mm, <laughs> will I, will I because you want to know what i really liked was cat dennings and uh the guy whose name i don't remember but is awesome and everything i see him uh being amazing together and be unraveling this plot with actual people from the movies in the thing uh i i really really like that i like those characters i like them uh, uh i like how they're 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 unraveling it i i, I like that and I think if you don't understand the difference between episode three of WandaVision and uh, a show that was largely devoid that was going off on their own adventures, uh, then then we're missing kind of what makes <laughs> these MCU shows as special as they can be. It's like three episodes in, holy crap. Th this is bigger than Mandalorian for, for, for me in terms of uh, the possibility of where they can take this. Like yeah. if it's this integrated into the MCU, holy crap. Like this is, this is next level. I, I get why they held it off for as long as they had, as long as the, 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 the subs were rising. They're like, 
no, we're just going to save this nitro booster until we absolutely have to, because we know we're sitting on the nuts. Yeah. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. sucked. I, <laughs> uh, like, I just, I feel like, oh, you should watch it. It's, it's like, I'm like, it's just, it's not good writing. It's just not good. It's like process. I'm sure the writers worked on are talented, but what they had to do to make the studio happen or whatever they wanted, it was just like, and I'd be like, oh, it's gotten better. And you watch an episode and it's like, they just like killed two security guards to get into a facility. you like, like these guys have jobs and families and stuff like, oh, you're overthinking it. It's like, uh, there's uh, nothing to think about. Nero <laughs> in the chat is asking to binge or not to binge. Normally I'm always on team binge, but, but WandaVision, like I'm enjoying the steeping that we're doing. I'm enjoying the slow burn. Even when it, you know, like I would say, I would say jump in, join us. We're all going to steep together because I mean, we're this, all this shocked was, and surprised at where it's this, going. This was also, I mean, a, a meta episode of a bunch of characters all discussing the same things that we're discussing it, it, like we're now like, we're now watching them try to think of all the things that we're thinking of because they're basically tv by the you know uh, tv it, television without pity recappers of this hostage situation that's I mean, happening uh, i don't think this is a spoiler but there's definitely multiple scenes where over their shoulders <laughs> is a whiteboard writing down the exact questions the home viewer has at this yes. point during the story it, it's it's remarkable i'm surprised you like uh, I, I, I i think this is a good i think it's a good episode and in a mystery you need to have a point where you say all of the questions out loud and you make them make the connections with what is the happening things. where is it happening or like the the, the quiet a quiet place remember yeah okay. what what sound attracts them on the big whiteboard like okay but i i it was a cool change of format <laughs> there is a uh... One of the things I liked about when they're like, I think it was Taika Waititi had said like they did it like Thor Ragnarok was like in Big Trouble in Little China, uh, Kurt Russell's character is always going, what's going on? Who's that? What's this? What's that? <laughs> and they use that kind of like as an idea to be like, what's this? What's that? You know, and like think sometimes it's over the top. Sometimes you got to do it. And so, you know, <laughs> here. Uh, yeah. Well, what a delight. What a delight. And I, I'm like, I'm sure Falcon and Winter Soldier looks cool, but I'm like, it's going to be cool. But I'm like, sitting to my girlfriend, like, like, yeah, like that feels like we're going to try to put a movie into six or eight episodes. Like here, I'm like, we're just going to do like a really cool comic book run, which yeah. I love that thinking. Uh, cool. Totally. I'm, I'm all about it. We all good. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, that's it. Um, yeah. Uh, I was deciding whether I wanted to do just a drive-by criticism of the last episode of The Expanse, but I won't. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk. We, there's hardly many more episodes left, so you know. I know. I love it. Look, I love. I love the show. You won't have. Them all cops, you won't have the didn't advanced, need them all cops. The they didn't need them all cops. They could have done. They, 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 they could have. They could have done something that actually tied into people. Anyway, emergent. Yeah, beacon. I was. It, it was a, a ticking clock when, when there already was a ticking clock. Uh, Gentlemen, it's been weird. As weird as space time is, which I learned more about thanks to Emergent Beacon. Alrighty. Uh, we're going to uh, shift gears here and get ready for after things in just a few minutes. Cool, cool. Yeah. If you need to go get your drink, now oh, the crap. time to do that. Um, okay. Um, hmm. Or not. You don't have to. Um, I'm just uh, arranging things in my mind um he's okay. picturing a big cube and rotating it slowly yeah smiling uh, okay all right uh, uh do we how long are we going on after things i do we do we have a subject or no or bryce bryce is not uh, <laughs> bryce the is one not person who can master. answer that just yeah. left okay all right well then i'll leave too all right okay. here we okay i just I'll stay here for thank it. you and Bryce, we'll we'll build a civilization together, right. and and all will they'll pay attention to us now. That's right. You know, this no is ours longer. now. This is ours now. Uh, uh, maybe I don't know. Uh, I don't know what what Andrew's plans are. I guess he could probably still hear us. He usually is able to hear us with those ear pods. He usually is. He's wandering, puttering about his uh, <laughs> stately manse. Um, uh, but I got a lot more done over the past week with the marble stuff. We got one week I saw left. It. Yeah. Calendar is out. Mm -hmm. Schedule is out. Mike TV will be joining us or will be 
performing on our first uh, show oh, on Sunday. Oh, that'll be fun. That's cool. Uh, uh, and and it's all it's 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 all closing in. You know, you you, you know when you you when you I mean you know what it's like to have a deadline, and you can see all of the pieces can converging in one point. It's a weird feeling. It's a weird feeling if you've been working on it for a while because on one hand, it almost feels like a betrayal of your work ethic, right? Because you're getting to the end of the project. And uh-huh. it's like like the 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 day-to-day of like, oh, I got to get this done and I got to get that done and I got to work on this and I got to get that done. And then eventually those things kind of like fall off the, the to-do list and you're like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm, I don't have any of the new things to do, but I also am getting to the end but now should i revisit those things should i be re right should i be reopening them to fix a thing a little thing and make sure that it's like uh uh, uh, there is such a worth to putting the birthday where it's Mm -hmm. like and it's out yeah go i think like uh maybe, maybe we should just save this for after things but the uh uh kind of the nice the good part and the the double edged sword of this is that this is you know a weekly thing for the next couple of months more or yeah. less and so uh you know day 1 is a certain set of things and then day 2 which is like 5 days later more things have to get spun up and start working and then by day 3 you know uh, those things need to kind of be optimized and touching everything more and more and making sure you're doing everything in a way that is uh non-destructive in certain ways and is templatable is is uh 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 is is you know a good use of time but i uh uh i i think it's uh i think it's looking good i think it's looking good um yeah no i'm I'm pumped dude i'm so i'm so excited yeah, uh good. to see to see what you do there thank you and to see where where it grows uh all right yeah go take a break uh, Andrew, do you have a uh, an out today? No, no, I don't. I mean, like two o'clock. I think we're okay. fine. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So that would be yeah. about fifty about fifty minutes five five zero. Uh, uh, did you catch that, Brian? What's that? That we uh, Andrew has to leave in about fifty minutes five oh, zero. Got it. Okay. Cool. Um. Uh, did, did, I forget if we got an after things thing. Let's see. Mm. Mm. Do we? I'm trying to see here. I'm going to forward you this email, Andrew. Um, it's a little long, and I don't quite know if this is too open ended or not. But I'm gonna here. I've forwarded you that email of something someone has sent along. Mm-mm. Cool. Cool. Are you ready to roll? Uh, just one last thing. We're checking. We're taking a look at this email. <laughs> just seeing here on Reddit, a uh, woman was conducting an aerobics class, not realizing that a coup was taking place as a military convoy literally pulls right behind her to seize control of the government. <laughs> she's just <laughs> she's just working out. She's just <laughs> shimmying and shaking and uh, just getting everybody's heart rate up. Just all the way jazzercising through. as a bunch of black cars <laughs> all roll in a convoy to seize control. That's amazing. Weird. Oh, that's a- uh the uh question bryce sent to me was uh talking about locals i don't know if you guys want to talk i mean there is something to talk about um kind of all these other emergent networks popping up yeah sure let's do it 
I yeah. I don't know I don't know anything, anything about locals about though. Me I mean, either I know people tweet about it like, "Oh, follow me on locals," and I'm like, uh, it's, "I'm just gonna move to a cabin." <laughs> yeah, I mean that's another Patreon platform, right? Oh yes, I almost thought it was a um, I thought it was a new Twitter, but no, it does look like no, it is. Yeah, a I've, the way I've understood it Patreon. is, uh, yeah, it's another uh, Patreon alternative. Okay. Same with Rockfin. Rockfin? Yeah, R-O-K-F-I-N. Talked with them a couple times. I haven't talked with anybody at local. Because I'm always, I'm I'm always, I'm I'm pumped to have alternate things other than Patreon. Uh, but they everybody kind of wants to do their own thing and not just replicate a few key Patreon features, which is really all I want, is just another place that I can upload stuff and people can get exclusive content via a custom rss feed uh okay well uh yeah uh we can do that um i don't know how much is in here just because i don't know these ones specifically very well but okay cool uh you feeling good andrew Yes, the answer to that question is, um, yeah, good. Okay. All right, then I'll catch it in for after things in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Gentlemen, this is After Things. And yeah. what I want is an update from Bryce. Oh. About what's going on? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the past week. Was very productive for the for the uh, the marbles, the League of Fun Games marbles season one. Uh, 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 took all of took took the advice from last week uh, very very seriously. Uh, I started up that Substack um, probably less than an hour after we finished recording that episode of After Things. Oh wow! Uh, and so we've got one there. Uh, I want to say it's about seventy or eighty signups so far on uh, on that email list. And that's uh, not having reached out to the other email list, the Video Games with Bryce email list, um, which I also just want to move over to Substack, which I think I can do. Uh, so, so that's been very good. Um, uh, uh, got the website uh, fully published with a little more info now, marbles.win, and it's got some information and it's got the sign up sheet and all that stuff. Uh, the schedule is posted. Um, uh, 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 and and uh, oh, one of the other things from last week was to do a dry run, which is what uh, what we did on on Friday, and uh, it was good. Uh, the last time previous that I had done a dry run, uh, it was it pretty much had to stop immediately because a bunch of stuff didn't work, and so this time it was it was good. We were able to do uh, about two two and a half hours, which is relatively long. Um, uh, that's one race or multiple races in two two and a half hours multiple races within one night so that's probably gotcha. okay 20 yeah. some 25 races or something um because you guys have done the super long ones right before we, right yeah we've we've done the ones where either a race can take one hour or six hours depending on how long we set it um but no these yeah. are these are they're just a couple minutes and they start every few minutes um, yeah and that was that was very good in terms of getting uh, a handle on um all of the extra things. So when I was doing this before without all of this extra, the extra competitive sport layer on top of it, it was just use the game and see what the game says. And then we move on. Um, and with this, there's a little bit more, there's data entry to be done. Um, yeah. and, uh, doing that test, it, Hey, it turns out a lot of that wasn't totally optimized or I was wasting time filling out things that, uh, 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 that were not necessary or not helpful at all. Um, and uh, one of the other things, uh, uh, after the, the, the next day, but uh, uh, I did uh, very, very briefly open up uh, the Discord that I talked about last week for for the Marvel stuff for uh, uh, for for some of the folks who are are really uh, enthusiastic and are, and are helping out a lot with 
with some of the programming stuff. Um, and, and that's been really helpful because over the past week we went from kind of just this very long, I mean, incredibly long form to fill out every race to, uh, uh, uh a lot of this was Crisco and, and Valken and Nick Howe in our chat where I can run an EXE and it clicks the right thing in the, in the game and it clicks the other thing in the game and it moves over and it can copy or it can paste all of that into a form and the form can do everything on its own. A very it goes from filling out a form to like it's like one or two clicks to 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 get everything done, which is is really really uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot, especially when it's it's just me and I have to be the race caller and the data guy and all of this stuff at the same time, and those seconds just add up, right? Like doing that test run was great because I could feel oh my god, I have to stop and be over here and be distracted for thirty seconds while the the race is happening or while the thing is done and everybody's just waiting for something to happen. Um, so I think that that was really valuable, and I think the progress we've made since then is is really good. So I, I am uh, even even more optimistic now that we are about six six days away um, from the first real launch day, and we'll probably do another test run before now and then as well. Um, yeah. So Bryce, you know, people often, you know, they ask like, you know, like how to know what you should be doing or how to get motivation and. Uh, side note, uh, last night on Clubhouse, when Elon Musk was talking, he brought up like, you know, people ask, so he said, people ask me for motivational advice about startups. And Elon said, and as Elon said, I said, if you're asking me for motivational advice, then you shouldn't be doing it. <laughs> yeah. Which, uh, is yeah. a great thing. And like people with books, like, oh, I don't, I'm not motivated by write a book. I'm like, then don't. No. It's the, it's like, the oh. F yeah theory, right? If it's not F yeah, it's F no. Yeah. I, it's, I never heard of it put that way, actually. Yeah. But. Uh, makes I, a lot of sense. I usually hear it with the with the real F word, but uh, but yeah. Which is one mm. price, which was what? Uh, uh, yeah, what is it? Fantastic yes. It's a fantastic mm. yes, or it's a fantastic no. Checks out. <laughs> Checks out. Um, so well, one of the other things, uh, ju just briefly, because this was talked about last week, uh, uh, on on after things, um, it w it was mentioned. Well, like, what if you got ended up getting like a sponsorship or something for this right like would you be able to do that and uh an after things listener actually um oh gosh i want to pull this up because uh i don't want to get it wrong but um one yeah, of I'm our gonna it, i'm gonna pull this up because the copy points say i have to very clearly say um <laughs> none of us like paying for razors <laughs> it just yeah. goes into an ad uh nicholas N nicholas who is in the diamond club we've actually seen some of his stuff in the diamond time segment of night attack he makes um uh these like uh um, acrylic goods um like bottle openers and and uh wine bottle stoppers and necklaces and stuff and so uh uh, uh he was like hey i heard them talk about this on after things i run this little acrylics thing can i give you a set of stuff money yeah well it, it, like here's you can give this to the winner and he's gonna send an extra one here oh, for cool. modern rogue hq that's cool that's yeah great. and so we the producer juice will be powered by spilled coffee workshop so we'll figure out a little graphics and stuff and, and so like little little stuff like that um and... already sell it out to big marvel <laughs> mm. yep. it's great the acrylic looks i'm trying to pull up the link here because it 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 does look. It, I mean, it looks. Oh, it's look great. It's, it, you would you would have used it even if they hadn't given it to you. That's how good. Oh, we know how this goes, Bryce. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so uh, that that's another uh, another thing from last week's episode that that kind of manifested a little bit. Um, Don't I, let your memes I'm be so dreams, excited. man. <laughs> Just go. Just go with it. Yeah, no, I'm 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 super pumped. I'm I'm very proud. So let's let's get that date out there. When again are we kicking off the uh League of Fun Games Marble season? Uh the season one kicks off on February seventh. That's this Sunday, right after another large uh bowl game. Uh it'll be immediately the big, after that. The big the big uh game. The big okay, yeah, yeah. By, game. by the way, can I can I can I shake a finger at all of Twitter that missed the real joke I was making? I, I posted all caps. I was like, the big game is the Super Bowl, the big game is the Super Bowl. Anyone who says otherwise is a coward. And then I put at McDonald's, at Coca-Cola, at Pornhub underscore premium at uh, it's like the whole joke was that I was just sneaking in a very sideways uh, uh, third corporate thing 
Um, but nobody noticed that. Everybody began to lecture me on Twitter about like, well, it's actually not illegal, the usage, Brian. The usage like, rights are... <laughs> right? meh, meh, meh. And I'm like, no, the joke you was that I, I snuck the words Pornhub. You, yeah. But you love doing it. The, oh, yes. Pornhub premium is always your third your third corporate thing. It's always Coke, Pepsi, and Pornhub. Yes. I thought it was Pornhub Aria. What, I, mean, I mean, that's just it. Is I actually picked one of the lesser popular ones like mm. to imply like a specific yeah. angle. Uh, mm. Bryce... I, I, you don't have to tell this story if you don't want oh. to. <laughs> yes, it was the thing but, I texted you. Yeah, you texted me a funny uh, uh, part of spitting this up mm -hmm. uh, where, as we've all learned, you rely on vendors mm -hmm. when you are spinning anything up on the internet, even if it's as simple as Patreon and PayPal and Venmo and stuff like that If to, to take in money from your fans. If it, even if you're not building a website, Bryce, for your emerging online league, mm -hmm. uh, you you had a bit of a rough spot. I had a had a bit of a rough go of it at first. So there is a support page. You can uh, Squarespace. The website is uh, marbles.win has a donate feature, and it plugs in with PayPal, and it can take Stripe for credit cards. And uh, I did not have a Stripe account, and I had to create a a business PayPal account because I have a personal account that I use for personal stuff. And uh, so I'm setting up the Stripe, uh, Stripe accounts, free, whatever. And they ask, oh, what, what, uh, what, is, what is your business? What type of business are you in? And I'm the business of playing with balls. And you know what? That's kind of what my thinking was. <laughs> I, and so I ended up picking fantasy sports, <laughs> uh, which also turned out to be slash uh, sports betting. <laughs> Oh no! And I got an email from Stripe about uh, about about three minutes after I filled out that form that said, "We are confirming that we're closing your account because this would be a completely illegal use of our services." So goodbye. So it's it is. So you so you literally <laughs> tagged yourself. I said as, me? Like that was the dummy that like like only morons, <laughs> even if they're trying to evade Stripe, only morons walk in and say, uh, yes, uh, walk into the bar and say, yes, I'd like to buy a fully loaded, untraceable gun, please. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's and weird then, is I have a copy of the email. It says quite literally one line. Uh, sorry, sir. You seem to have mistaken us for Robin Hood. <laughs> Yeah. So so you you tagged yourself with the thing that I'm sure it, maybe it goes to somebody as yeah. a red flag. Please close this. It's Dumbo's the bit that account. they coded into the into the app that was like no one's yeah. ever gonna do this. Like they've never had to run this protocol. So it was only like yesterday or something that they we <laughs> finished exchanging emails and it got set and it, it's all working now. But it was very it was a very it was. It was very humbling to have to go, no, I'm an idiot. I just, this is like a little tip jar and I might sell pins at some point. And so I want to please. Nobody's gambling it's a Twitch account. on which made up imaginary ball falls yeah. into which bucket they, at what time. Because they're like, okay, we can review this, but we need to know all, where, what is your business model and who are you yeah. and what's going on? And I was like, oh, crap. I don't know that's not brilliant. Well, I work for a guy who did a thing called Scam School. <laughs> oh, don't, scam don't even get me school. started on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I'll tell you what. Between Brian and, and Darren Kitchen. Uh, the Hack just, Five. <laughs> you got the, all the, the horror stories. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Just as soon as it's like periodically, like some new dingleberry rolls in and sees a bunch of money being funneled through a thing called Scam or Hack. Right. <laughs> and they're like, what? Stop it! Like right. that's that's it might as well be Al Qaeda. Knock it off! And then they're like, "Hey, we've been a peaceful and helpful uh, customer for over a decade." Like, oh, all right. Well, uh, it's been six months since I first freaked out, but I guess here's your money. <laughs> Hello, I have a new business. I... It's called Crime Dash Illegal Dash Gambling Dash Counter Strike Dash Knives dot info. Oh, I said, oh, that's gonna be open. I, actually. Uh, I... uh, <laughs> Our, our our friend Anthony Carboni had a hard time uh, getting his uh, a, a credit card for his LLC, which he called the World Crime League, <laughs> <laughs> which is definitely a reference to Buckaroo Banzai. <laughs> I had a uh, I once did a corporate show that was like it was it produced a lot of stuff. It was like 
they sent me it was like a hundred thousand dollar check right and they uh used uh like paypal like it was a paypal sort of way it got paid right mm -hmm. Check the like payment. I check my electronic payment. I get the payment goes through, goes into my bank account. And I got the money there in my bank because I don't let it sit. Not letting that sit in PayPal. I get a call from like, hi, this is from from PayPal Security. I'm like, how can I help you? Uh, I have some questions about this transaction that took place. I'm like, what do you need? What was this for? I'm like, well, it's between me and my customer. Yeah, but I need more details on that. Hmm. I'm like, why do I need to provide details? What's well, a large amount? I'm like. Yeah, and I have the money now. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> is somebody complaining? Well, we're the part of the fraud detection problem. Like, there's no fraud here. I need to know specifically what this is about or whatever. And I'm like, well, you can talk to them or whatever. And because I realized for some reason it was flagged and they shouldn't have gone through and it, or whatever it went through and it was everything was fine. But it was one of these things like somebody's oh. covering their ass. And I'm like, it's a corporate client. I'm doing a thing. And I was doing a magic project for them. And I'm like, I'm like, but, what's but, a magic project? It's like, and I if have they're going to go down. I'm going to hold on to this $5,000 check, <laughs> like all the way to the bottom of the ocean. $100,000. Oh, hey. $100,000 check. $100,000 check. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to dig it up. I, I, I want to track down the guy and see if we can get him on the show or something. But uh, there's a dude who uh, cashed a $50,000 novelty check. It was an advertisement that looked like a check. Oh, and, and they didn't have like void on it or uh, the it, they, fine they, print. Like uh, he put it in there kind of as a joke and then saw $50,000 in his stuff and then began to research how that works. And clearly it was a mistake on behalf of the bank or whatever. But in the meantime, went and got a cashier's check that he put in a safe deposit box at a different bank. Then just sort of waited and then started getting phone calls about like, oh, we have questions about this deposit or whatever. And it's like, yeah, it was a novelty check. It was very, so which, and so then he goes to uh, the press and the press, like, like everything's friendly on the phone. And then the moment the tape recorder is pressed, all of a sudden it's just like, so why did you set out to defraud this bank? And there, and he's like, <laughs> whoa, whoa. And then uh, uh, eventually it's like uh, it, the loophole was that, that the only time the words, this is not a check, are totally useless, is when it's on a check. Like, and the whole <laughs> purpose is like, so you can't write a check and in the memo write, this is not a check. Mm -mm. That's what this advertisement did. Uh, uh. <laughs> and, so, and so the bank couldn't claim fraud because they had filled his bank account with that $50,000 that they mistakenly were not the ones obeying the rules on. And he happened to have, oh, it's, it's an amazing story. It's an incredible read. It, it, somebody can find it. That reminds me of someone who did a similar thing with uh, using a using a credit card. Maybe it was a Reddit thing or like a maybe a blogger thing. But they went around trying to buy, buying TVs with their credit card. This was when you would have to sign for everything. Uh, and they would sign with a void and they would see what retailers would stop that would stop him or take a look at the transaction. And not a lot of them did. That's amazing. I think one, I think there was like one cashier who was like, what are you doing with this? Are you trying to, are you trying to defraud me? Um, but a lot of it just went through cause no one, yeah, totally no one looks cares. No one cares. <laughs> Plus also There's that's, that's where the credit card companies get their VIG is by absorbing that friction between the buyer and the seller. Yeah. I remember, my dad was explaining some of the different scams to me because, like, would, you know, like he'd go into these uh, downtown, and sometimes there would be like a fly-by-night place selling all this electronics and stuff. And my dad said it was called something like a bus stop deal, or whatever. And basically, if some merchant gets a line of credit and orders in a bunch of merchandise and sells it below the retail price and below like what the, even the wholesale price, and then defaults, you know, because they bought it under you know fraudulent you know names or whatever, and uh, mm -hmm. you know. Somebody told me about a family they knew, and what they did is like one person would get a line of credit, get all the credit cards they could, spend like crazy on it, default, and then declare bankruptcy. And then somebody else in the family would then get the credit cards, do this, do the same process. And there were enough people that after seven years, somebody's time was up, you know, and you could kind of loop back into the system. And wow. Well, that's wild. Yeah. Uh, so this is a bit like the uh, the whole going out of business scam. Uh, you walk in, you're like, uh, this is a great business. I want to buy this business. And then it's like, okay, here's a cashier's check for $50,000. I now have this business. Bye. Okay. And then in the two weeks it takes to clear everything, you put up a big old sign that says going out of business cash for fixtures. And then you sell <laughs> everything. And then by the time you're the check in bounces. a different city under, under a different uh, name. Yeah. 
it's it's crazy in like you know in California, you know, there, there's some attentions come to the fact that like I don't know, maybe thirty billion dollars of COVID relief was going to like convicts doing writing fraudulent you know reports from prison, which is an ongoing thing. A lot of credit card fraud happens from inmates because they have access to internet and cell phones and stuff like a huge amount. And I, I know of cases and stuff of people serving four or five year sentences, pulling off like large equipment buys and pulling the same scam while they're in jail doing this, which is just, well, but you look at because like what it really takes is economy. money and attention and uh, prisoners got a lot of both <laughs> like maybe not so many resources lots of money or lots of time and attention enough enough, yeah. enough resources but yeah anyone who has dollars <laughs> anyone in, who has in, like a subculture on tiktok can do scams oh god i mean yeah. uh, uh 30 billion dollars coming out of uh fraudulent unemployment claims which by the way is greater than the gdp of macedonia wow. i looked that up like that's that's and that's just a fraud story that kind of came and went like we don't even really care about that all that much like that like gavin newsom might face recall in, in the state of california and that's like probably outside the top five of reasons why people are upset 30 billion dollars just going missing wow uh, you know that's it's amazing <laughs> when you think about how much how much of that we absorb and how much of that is reflected into one prices for things how much we absorb it meaning that it costs but we it we're not apparent it's not apparent obviously to where the costs go towards that and uh, uh i don't mean you just and then could go on about that um bryce question i want to ask you was yeah what was the trigger that made you go marbles marbles you know <laughs> pulling up the ring from hudsucker proxy you see that you see that kids are gonna love it you know for streamers <laughs> the yeah. the thing uh, was we we I've been doing uh, streams with the game the marbles on stream game uh, kind of on and off for a year and a half maybe almost two years now and it's always fun and uh, I I just could never find the time to set aside for like a weekly thing you know that like it's a lot of fun people like doing it and it is only just. It, it can only be salt and pepper when it's very occasional. But if you want it to be a meat and potatoes, then it should be kind of a regular thing, right? And and at about the same time, I started doing my regular Friday night thing, which was kind of already its own thing. And I didn't want to overtake that. And so um, the, the big like confirmation was over the holidays doing nine daily stream, doing a stream every day for nine days at the end of the year, at the end of 2020. And seeing, okay, are will people be interested if if I did an hour or two every day for over a week? And if so, then then there really is something here that has a, at least has a good enough runway, you know, has a lot of juice in it, um, and a lot of excitement that that you can build something around and build something up. And and it turned out that that was the case. Uh, it 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 uh, was always a very enthusiastic reaction it was always uh um, a lot of a lot of excitement whether it was during the day during the evening um and it was a lot of fun right i mean the other thing is just it's it was a lot of fun for me to kind of be uh both the you know the cameraman and the and the announcer um and so both of those things uh uh led me to go okay well if i'm gonna do it regularly i don't want to say Every Thursday until the end of time, I'm going to do this, but I want to be able to let people know, hey, this is the next, this is what it looks like to give them some regularity. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, starting in February to give time to build up all these things. So, uh, it, I don't know, it was just, it was a spark of like, it was really fun to do. And, uh, I, yeah. You know, I have a theory and that is like that, because a lot of people were looking for the thing, like, oh, what should I do? What should I do? And I think the part of the problem is a lot of us, we don't have surface contact with a lot of interesting stuff. And then we see one interesting thing. We're like, oh, my God, I want to do this. And then the interest dry, dies away. It just it goes off. Where if you're exposed to a lot of different things, when you do find a thing that really is that fit, the signal is higher. The peak is higher. Yeah. You're like, oh, can't stop thinking about it. Yeah. And that's the mode that I've been in since 
D- December 31st when I announced this is just what how you know just it's been fun like I haven't had really picks for like weird things or anything because outside of the stuff for spoiling time I've been ch- trying to work on this and and you know all the other shirt shoots and, and stuff as well um it's it's been a spark of inspiration I guess that you know I really hadn't had since you know I did I did Mercury Counter that album right before mm-hmm. I moved out here six years ago and I and so at the end of the day, whether it's successful or not, I'm having a I'm having a good time, and I feel excited to build something that is that is kind of different and and kind of new, even in this own subcategory. Well, and that's a great point too, because like I look at like the problem I've had most of my life is like I've had more schemes than plans. You know, I'm like ah, I'm gonna do this you know, because this will make me money or this is my scheme here. And I think about the fact that like, you know, something can start as a scheme, but then when you find out that you really enjoy it, then it becomes something more than that. And Mm -hmm. I think that, I don't know, that's the whole, it's like the, you know, it's a cliche, like, Oh, you're the thing you, you know, whatever you would do for free, you know, if you'd wake up and do it, not get paid, then that's something you should be doing. And it's like, well, you know, nobody's going to pay me to sit around and, you know, eat Skittles, but, um, there is something to be said there. It's like, yeah, when you, like you said, you don't care right now. You're, you know, there's ways to monetize it and you're kind of more of doing that just as sort of, I think an external justification than an internal mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a tip jar right now. And yeah. And I think that that's valuable data, like, like valuable data on when people want to tip and, and beyond the initial, moment where people will be excited about it where where they get excited enough to, to to part with money like that's to me as valuable as time spent watching and and time you know subscribers and stuff like that like all the other metrics that you would count that we think of as more pure because they're free but in whether or not it's marbles or something else like understanding where, where that line in is 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 important and i think that the benefit that you have bryce is because you've been so intricately involved in so many different online new media projects and you shepherd some of them, you also know what success looks like, what the work looks like to get there, what kind of success you're happy with, you're going to be happy with, at least in, 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 in the short term. Like there's, there's a lot that goes into it. And the only way that you get it is by doing, being involved in things. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's been, uh, you know, I, I'm still rusty on some stuff. I had to relearn a little bit about like 3D rendering and you know web development, and I'm learning databases for all the stat stuff. And and there's going to be a big video component to it. So uh, it's it's been uh, it's been very personally fulfilling to just kind of reflex all of those muscles. And uh, you know uh, something that I kind of came to when I, at the end, I was kind of just talking on stream after we did that dry run, uh, over the past week of like, uh, editorially, there's also something that feels very, uh, um, feels very empowering with not just, uh, uh, the square that is this marbles thing, but also the larger brand of of the league of fun games of like okay like now this is not just the name of bryce doing stuff on twitch this is like doing stuff like similar to the marbles thing where it's community based or there is taking a game and building something on top of it like it's not just the wide open planes there's actually kind of direction to it there's actually like concepts and 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 things that you can kind of extrapolate and and that's uh, another really thing I'm excited about long term is like, okay, you know, after marbles, like after as if it's going to die, but it can go for as long as it needs to. Uh, there can also be other things that are similar to it or or in the same vein. And and I'm excited about that, too, uh, to to feel like, okay, this isn't just until we all stop getting excited about this marbles game, but this can be a larger, broader kind of concept of using the community within uh within games um totally well there's i you know i was thinking about uh, i was thinking about the fact right now that like what 
you know, what is power or what is value? And you, you, you know, we're watching some video or something and they brought up like, you know, you know, Tony Robbins is worth like $500 million. And I'm like, think about like, you know, to, you know, somebody who's an exec at some tech company who pensions out or whatever with a million or two, what somebody who just works a normal sort of job kind of well paid but not anything exceptional what tony robbins is to them jeff bezos is to tony robbins you know yeah. like, like however much money you think oh wow that's rich it's like yeah and that was like you know when uh what's his face your favorite guy who you know ran for uh president um up bloomberg but the other guy uh steyer or who was it uh Dang. who was the other billionaire jill stein uh tom steyer tom steyer yeah, Steyer, yeah. So, yeah. and you're like, ah, he's a billionaire. Like, well, there's degrees of billionaire. <laughs> like, like you know, you're Steyer, like a billion or so. And then you got like uh, Bloomberg. But if Bloomberg ran against Joe Rogan for president, God help us all. Let me make that very, very <laughs> clear. God help us all. Um, Rogan might have the better chance because Rogan has his platform and Rogan has this, you know, audience, this reach. You know, we're, we may have a recall in California Last time we had a recall, the guy who won was Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was, because he was an actor and had this recognizability, helped him immensely. And I think that that's one of the things I think about is like, there is having money and there's having a platform and there are a lot of people who have money who all of a sudden go, oh shoot, I don't really have a platform. I can do press releases. I can use all the old tricks to try to get my word out there, but it's not the same as you know some, some influencer who has 50,000 people follow him, but a lot of them are journalists and stuff who says something, boom. Is this like a secret roast you guys are doing where like Bryce says, uh, I need to make sure to brand my thing bigger than marbles, which is what I said last week. And then oh. Andrew goes into an explanation of the story, attention, sales, different currencies thing. And, and just everybody says, they, am I being gaslit? That's what I want to know. I, I was the one who also said, use a name beside yourself by that. And I like your story attention thing, Brian. And I also remember having conversations about you about how to capture the value you all have. Right, and right. We started like this stuff. by saying, I mm. took all of your advice. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just, it's, yeah. it's, it's no, hard to have no, no, anything no, no, to no. say what, what, when what, what, everybody's what, what, just what, saying Brian... all the things that you like to say. <laughs> what, and it's like, what what's my Pepsi to your Coke? I've got nothing to say. <laughs> what, what Brian wants is whenever you're making a point, just pause every five minutes and say as brian thinks no and then continue with your point uh, actually uh yes yeah yeah yes as brian all once told other, me that's all, a all, that's all a fantastic idea. should be asking <laughs> where's brian well it's it's just so weird because usually on every podcast my go-to algorithm is listen to words being said figure out the part where you disagree and then immediately even if it's only a slight disagreement jump in with your slight disagreement and, and uh i've been silent for half an hour now because everyone's just saying things that i, I really but, you like know, and agree and, and, with. Yeah, but, that, but you can also you could also say like there's the other ways to add to it like i would say that the things that we take for granted and we have our narrative everybody has their narrative of success and we often leave out some of the critical parts and i think we're all guilty of that mm. i I was able to get a lot of tailwind from the Weird Things podcast to launch my book, which was able to get tailwind off of Night Attack because of what you got, you and you know Justin and were able to put together, which got tailwind from Scam School, which got tailwind from Rev3 or whatever that was, which had a lot of venture capital, which got tailwind from other things. That's one of the things that we often from, forget. From, from the like, death, uh, from, from, the, from the latent ang ang anger of having tech TV taken away uh, mm -hmm. uh, from, from that audience. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, it's a, and I guess what I was trying to say is like, yeah, like, you know, we, we, we shocker platforms are power, but like more and more, more and more like, like you think that they have power before they're going to be even bigger. And we, you know, we saw that with, uh, you know, Trump, Trump's, you know, ability to get elected in 2016 was, he was better, at, better at the media game than politicians were. And they thought they were good at it. Um, yeah. And then something, 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 <laughs> but like, and that's like, now it's like, I just think about like, ah, everybody listening, start that email list. 
to your right? platform. <laughs> you know, like um, and it's just well, and, and and if I uh, um, uh, another aspect to that is I I really do like the metaphor of thinking about uh, attention as real estate in the mind because like real real estate is kind of valueless. Like saying I own this property doesn't matter if nobody wants to buy it if if it's not currently up for development if it's not a place that people go to you can own a lot of real estate and it's not until there's something to do with it that it matters and so likewise um uh, both in the example of you know uh, political office you know that latent real estate of being a no name was kind of valueless because it wasn't very good at selling bottled water or whatever scheme trump was doing but it was extremely valuable when you're up on a stage trying to to defeat marco rubio or whatever uh so um, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I think you're doing a, a really, really smart thing, Bryce, in that, um, uh, in that you're building just that general real estate in the mind, and you don't have to always be harvesting. Uh, uh, right. uh, just building uh, uh, the, the territory is, is value in and of itself. That's one thing that I, I'm trying to, uh, I don't know if there's a name for it, but, but, uh, 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 when you're given good advice and you're not, and you don't take it because you have idea, you have plenty of reasons why you shouldn't take good advice. Right. Oh, like called the yeah. story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> but I, like I had that during the dry run, right? Like that, 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 that stream kind of went until about what, like midnight, 1am local time here. And there were still a few people hanging around and we were just talking and, you know, I was telling them, you know, some of the stuff that I mentioned here and, and uh, uh, I even like, I, I well, one thing I had mentioned was like, yeah, I even have like a discord ready for like whenever I decide that we start putting people on discord. And it was uh, it was a longtime Diamond Club friend. Uh, I poop my pants dot com who was like, just <laughs> give us the just open it right now. Just give us the thing right now. Like, who cares? Uh, and I was like, well, but I'm, you know, I'm focusing on this and I'm doing this and then this and this. And then it was like right when I turned the stream off that I was like, no, he they were exactly right that. 20 30 people who were just watching still at at 1 a.m when i'm you because, know drunk off my ass making, just talking stuff you're making them special right, right? exactly and you not doing it for your own plan was making them not special you were making you were you were taking an opportunity away from them mm -hmm. and that's this is to be totally this is like advanced like you know community management in my mind but it's like you got to really be sure that you're not just withholding something for like, oh, but it's on my schedule to do tomorrow, right. like sake. Like, you've got to be very sure that it's like, okay, no, that's not ready. We need to make sure that it's it's a little bit more like, but, you know, as soon as you mentioned, I mean, dude, uh, 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 this is all I'll say about it. Working on certain projects where... You know, you can't talk about it, not because it wouldn't be good for people to get excited, but because you want to c control the narrative on it. You know, mm -hmm. you want to be able to know like, OK, well, this is coming out and this is when you're excited and this is the, the thing that you're going to do immediately. And that takes effort. Right. But you have to know what you're doing beforehand. Because otherwise, it's like just interacting with your audience is always a good thing. Giving them things that make them feel special is always a good thing. Yeah. Uh, but unless you have a plan to kind of like walk them down the path and then reveal. It. Right. And so like Im immediately after I was like, okay, in the night attack discord channel where we talk about it, I was like, Hey, here's the link. I should have just given it to you guys in the chat last night. It'll be open for a few hours and then I'll give it out to the email people as well. So that there's a little, so that they like, I wasn't going to wait all 10 weeks to, to open it up, but it definitely was like a thing I was holding on to because I wanted to work on it some more. Right. And that was a part like that's one thing I'm I'm kind of having to kind of triage is like what things need to be done by day one and what things are just shaving and making making nicer and making and where perfect can be the enemy of good. There are things with the stream where these things need to get done or X, Y, and Z just don't happen. And then there are things where you can do it now and it can get better over time and it's not a big deal and it doesn't have to be perfect right away. And the Discord was one of the, was one of those things where just open it up, whatever, and not, not a big deal. Um, and so I'm trying to, I'm trying to uncouple that stuff because I, yeah, I can kind of be, uh, especially 
uh, especially on stuff. You know, I do a lot of stuff, a lot of projects where I'm 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 the one working on it most of the time, and I can kind of kind of be a little controlling about that stuff. I can be a little in my head about the ways things get done and what's important. Yeah. And so I'm trying to be cognizant of the end of the day. I want to make a fun show. This is what the, again another thing we talked about last week. Uh, my the takeaways about what I want this thing to be are: I want to put on a great show. I want to build a good community, and you don't you don't need a stats database to do that. You don't need good 3D renders of trophies and stuff to do that uh, necess- necessarily. They affect things in different ways, but but trying to remember to keep uh, you know kind of keep a, a, a a north star on what is and isn't important, especially with now six only six days to air. Yeah, I mean that's and that, you just said the most critical part there, like six days to air. Like it's fine to explore, but then you decide what's important. You set your air date, and you figure it out to go do it, and you try these different things. That's fine, because sometimes there's that discovery, that little thing that makes everything easier that you don't know and. I know that with coding projects, sometimes I probably spend a little, should have spent a little more time exploring because I'd be like, oh, if I'd found this tutorial sooner, I would have done in two days instead of two weeks. Mm. But you know, but you, you're smart. You know, you're more. I think you're more pragmatic about this than I am, and um, it's just exciting. I'm very proud. Very. Pr- no, I have no reason to claim any being proud at all. <laughs> but I am proud. But no, it I mean, fun to watch. It's th- th- these these after things discussions have really really been helpful for me as well. You know, um, in 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 terms of you know tuning those things and tuning the things that I know I've got weaknesses for. It's a it's like um uh uh to to a certain degree I, and and I I don't think I'm talking out of school but um mm-hmm. uh, Daniel Whittington uh, one of the co-hosts over at the Whiskey Tribe you know he uh, as as vice chancellor over at Wizard Academy they do a bunch of business uh, courses or whatever and like at some point early on it's like man I just hope the tech works and I can introduce the guy and do the thing who good I I didn't poop my pants or whatever and then like at some point it's like oh my God, I get to take all of the classes. <laughs> I get to pay attention to all of this and do all of the learning, which you've gotten to do for, uh, you know, what, four or five years now. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm excited for it. Marbles.win. Let's do picks. Uh, emergent beacon, emergent beacon, emergent beacon. They're two very interesting, easy to remember words. Emergent, it's something emerging. Beacon, it's a signal. Emergent mm. beacon is two words that are easy to type into YouTube and uh, uh, allow, and then you click subscribe. That's right. Uh, Brant, who is uh, one of our editors and producers for Modern Rogue, has got a new science channel up, and his video on the Einstein crosses is, is incredible. the The way he mixes uh, motion graphics and like really in depth science uh, information is so is just it's just it's uh, he's got the it's right balance. It's literally better than broadcast television i mean it's incredible it's literally it's you know 4k it's gorgeous uh, it, it's uh, it's it's brant at his brantest and i'm so uh dare and, dare i say proud and, uh, and, and also like he, he's putting a lot of effort into it too like we shot this he and uh, he he asked me to help him shoot this bit on the side of the road and we spent an hour out there in the freezing cold so he could do this you know this really interesting uh kind of scale demonstration yeah the difference. basically to depict how far away something is uh, a galaxy the size of a dime uh how like uh, he walks a mile down the road <laughs> something like that uh and and it and it, it it's great he, he really cares about this and it, i'm super excited for it because a lot of his style you know a lot of the stuff that makes brant brant like brian knows what i'm talking about like brant uh, Brant has his own kind of flavor and it really comes across here the way that it is difficult when it's like him editing Brian and Jason or, or you know, back in editing Scam School, you know? Like he's, uh, I said this on Twitter, like when you can write for yourself, uh, you know the things that you're going to do and, and I think that fuels the enthusiasm more and you see it. I, I, I feel it really on display here more than anywhere else I've seen him do stuff. I, I have to bolt, I'm going to do my pick. Okay. Um, write down this URL M A R B L E S dot win marbles dot win. Uh, thank you. That is Bryce's website. Marbles dot win marbles dot win. I'm going to put it on my chest, like golden palace. If anybody remembers that oh my marbles God. dot win <laughs> marbles dot win, go there, sign up, get information on that. Thank you very much. Marbles Andrew. dot win. 
And Boom. I sent you a little don't hand, hand everybody else. I sent them a little donation to get things going. Ooh, there too. Thank you. I'm excited about this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank attached. you very much. Oh my God. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm excited. All right. Uh, I got to run. Thank you, Andrew. All right. Yeah. Emergent beacon is mine. Yeah. Uh, it's been after. <laughs> nice. What's up, everybody? All right. Uh, that'll do it for us here. Uh, we will be back with Cord Killers in a couple hours. It'll be Brian and Tom and myself. Night Attack tomorrow will be early. We'll be doing it here on twitch.tv slash Night Attack. Um, and they will be hosting it over on the Ice Cream social channel. Um, and then I think we'll probably oh, rerun it at its normal time. So What time again? Uh, 4 p.m. Central, I think 2 p.m. Pacific. All right, cool. It should be good. We should be good with that. See ya. So, yeah, thank good stuff, everybody. Bye. Bye.